Hello and welcome to the next episode of The Podcast, the cannabis podcast for budding enthusiasts. As always, you're joined by your host, Heavy Days, here from the Upside Down Library, and we would like to give a big shout out to our sponsors who help make the show happen. See it here now, number one in the industry, not just for genetics, but also for their incredible customer service. If you're not happy at the end of the grow, hit them up. They'll fix you up. They only stock breeders they know and vouch for, and they got all the biggest, latest drops, hottest breeders, everything you could want. Go check them out. See it here now. Likewise, in order to assess your genetics and find the best phenotype, you need to have a happy and healthy garden. And in order to do that, we recommend you check out our friends at Coppet Biological Systems. These guys have all the best predators and feeds in the game to keep your garden pest and pathogen free, ready to give you the best crop to date. Check out the Spidex Vital or the Affy Par M, both designed for cannabis environments to help your plants thrive and be pest and pathogen free. Coppet Biological Systems, shout out guys. Likewise, shout out to our friends at ProMix. You know them, you love them. They've produced great media over the years, but now they've got an incredible mycorrhizal product for you, ProMix Connect. With the highest guarantee on viable spore count in the game, it is the best option. Check out ProMix Connect for increased resin, increased terpene, increased yield, increased everything. I don't need to tell you about mycorrhiza, guys. You know it. Get the best on the market. You won't regret it. ProMix Connect, thank you very much. Finally, huge shout out to our friends at Charlie's Cannabis. Family owned, veteran operated, craft flower, everything single source production, nothing sourced from outside. Everything they sell from the pre rolls to the flower is absolute top quality. Trust me, guys, you really want to support a good brand, good people behind it. Charlie's Cannabis, get all over it, guys. Top quality, fire. And last but not least, a huge shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys are the lifeblood of the show. You help make episodes happen. Please go check it out at patreon.com forward slash the podcast. Unheard episodes, exclusive content. Check it out. On this episode, we're joined by the crowd favorite. The skunk warrior himself, the head honcho of Dominion Seed Code, Duke Diamond VA. Here to chat genetics, plans for the future, what he's been up to, so much more. Let's get into it. Alrighty, my friends, we are back for another one. And on this one, a huge welcome to the true skunk commander, the man behind Dominion Seed Co., Keeper of the Fire, a very special man to me indeed. Duke Diamond, welcome back on the show, my friend. Thank you, buddy. Good to be here. As always, good to have you on. How are you doing today? Ah, oh, man, doing spiffy. Doing spiffy. How are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. I um, I had like uh, the probably the first dab I've had in probably years last night, and I feel like I have a bong over so hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> that will happen. Yeah, like, oh, it's not going away. <laughs> yeah, like it was good in the moment. I was like, oh yeah, I'm pretty high again. Um, but yeah, wow, I can because it's like I when it sometimes when you talk to people who don't smoke weed, often they say that they're like, oh, the next day do you feel real foggy, and it's like I feel that right now. Oh yeah, tolerance is good and down, but yeah, save a lot of money that way. <laughs> Right, and how about yourself? Have you been able to partake in anything, or you still need to abstain for a bit? Yeah, definitely got to got to abstain for the uh, for the time being. Probably this time next year, I'll be I'll be good to go. But I'm gonna say that tolerance will be good and new. It'll be like the first time again. So that's awesome. Uh, dude, I'm I'm jealous. I took a two week break about a year ago. Even two weeks, but I can only imagine a year is gonna be so good. Oh man, I remember what happened the last time. I got off the paper and then I went and blazed and uh, shit before I even blew the second toke out, man. I was like, I should have probably left that at one. Holy shit. And <laughs> you know, I was fucking blasted. When, you, when, when that happened last time, what was the first thing you smoked? Was it something where you were like, oh man, I'm just so itching for this? Um, well, I had done a, uh, I had an outdoor. And by the time it was chopped and ready, that was about 
the time when uh, I was off a of, off a of paper, and it was uh, fucking some outdoor Jack the Ripper. <laughs> oh, there you go! Shout out Subcool. Yeah, man. He uh, I right when I got out, he was like, "Yep, want some beans?" I was like, "Yep." <laughs> <laughs> so he sent him on the sent them on the way, and fucking forty eight hours later, they were pop. You know, fucking um, ready to ready to rock and roll, man. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. And if we sort of fast forward now, is there anything that's sort of front runner in your mind where you're like, once I'm able to, that's going to be the one I'm hitting first? Yeah, I've, I've been thinking through it through my mind and I think uh, I think it's going to be some eagle. I'm screaming eagle. I was thinking like, oh, it should be some free bird, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm going to go with the eagle though. <coughs> Yeah, I I still so fondly remember that eagle from years ago. You, it, I don't know if they're all like this, but the one I tried from you, it was like had that sort of citrus vibe to it. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, it was like that rainbow candy, lemony, citrusy type type shit going on. Yeah, that was the was definitely a dominant one amongst all the all the all the phenos, you know. Out of curiosity, I had thought about this years ago. And I was looking at the genetics and I was like, oh, man, where did this flavor come from? Because in my mind, I was like, I can't see the clear parent where it's like, oh, it's from this. What was it in your mind? Um, that, that purpley candy rainbow type thing was coming from that, from that 88. And then that, that citrusy side, that was definitely out of, the, out of the airborne. Ah, there you go. That makes sense because I don't know why, but for the longest time I thought, is this Kandahar got like something funky going on in it? And no, nah, no, nah, it was uh, it was like I I could like distinctly taste it, you know, especially from blazing each one, you know, individually. And I was like, yeah, you can. It's like the perfect little blend of, you know, it's like harmony, symmetry thing going on. I was like, wow, that's super cool because that that doesn't happen much where you get you know a good mix of flavor you know it's a very rare thing and it worked out really good that way yeah beautiful stuff beautiful stuff i guess the first thing to maybe clear the air although probably everyone's aware is uh, you recently got out of jail would you be able to tell us a little bit more about that if you're willing to yeah um yeah i was just uh was down i was you know was in the uh, jail for a while while I was, you know, going through the motions and, you know, fighting shit and um, just waiting on them because, like, literally everything came to a screeching halt. Normally, the process, like, goes through a whole lot quicker um, because of COVID. They were shutting ports down and everything else. So, amongst every other thing that was, you know, fucking up, uh, that was that. So, stayed a unusually long time uh, there. I think it was just over a year just just sitting there in the in that fucking jail and then uh once i did that and you know they they they, they come to you you know you can you sign off pay you know whatever guilty so it's like kind of an option it's like once they got you there you're not getting out um you can either you know take the next three to five years fighting it spend shit tons of money and have your pride and be like yeah see i was right or, you know, it's like you're <laughs> the chances of winning are not good. They have like a 99% conviction rate. Even if you're right, they're like, no, nah, you're wrong because uh, we say so. So um, you can either do that or, you know, you can look at like the time and look at the maximum that you're that you're looking at losing. So if you're looking like, say, 24 to 30 months or something like that, you're like, all right, two and a half years. And I'm already, you know, about a year into it with good time and everything, you know, it'd be about another year. Um, do I do that or do I spend three to five years and a shit ton of money staying here just to lose, you know, and, and that ensures that, hey, you're definitely going to get the high end either way. So it's like, you know, you got you to gotta make that call. You got to put up your fight. You know what I mean? Let them know, like, you know, you need business and shit. Um, but there comes a point where it's just, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're not gonna get the fair shake at it. So, once I sign off, get fucking, you know, plead guilty, get sentenced or whatever, um, it's 29 months. 
Um, so I got like, you know, a year already, you know, knocked off of it, you know, with a good time and everything, you know, it's like going to be another year. Um, so then it's like, all right, now you can finally like start your journey of getting done. So they're going to throw you in con air. You're going to go to the, you know, go to prison. Um, and there's like an intermediate step. Um, there's like a transit hub in Oklahoma, but they closed it down because of COVID. So there was all maximum security state joint that they had closed down and private corporation bought it out. So they were just sticking us all there. We were, we were doing normally in transit, you're doing like a day to three days, but this turned into many months. And, uh, that place was just fucking off the chain, man. And, um, so then, uh, once you get getting shipped out of there, you get back on con air and then you hit your, uh, your final destination, which was, uh, Florence, uh, Florence, Colorado. And, um, then, you know, just wrapped it up there and, uh, yeah, got out on the, uh, on the second. And that was, uh, that was pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. And it was good to get to be back and get a hold of everybody and, you know, see everybody's good and everybody hitting you up, you know, and, it's, it's real nice, a lot of a lot of love out there. So it's a pretty pretty awesome thing. Yeah, that's so fantastic to hear you out. I'm sure a lot of the community sort of rallied behind that. Just to clarify, because I know a lot of people had asked, are you willing to disclose with us why you ended up going to jail? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, like I was telling you earlier, it's like it's free. It's on the internet. You can read all about it. You know, all the all the sentencing shit and everything um felon in possession of a firearm and like some people are like why 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 it's like straight up you know um it's a fucking crazy place people are shooting up fucking walmarts and fucking whacking people in fucking grocery stores and shit like that um i you know i was very adamant i'm not gonna be that guy that's gonna get fucking shot up i'm not gonna watch a bunch of you know random people just get fucking mowed down my family's not going to get fucking hurt or friends are not going to get hurt if, if I'm there. And I'm like, you know, they'll say anything. I'd, I'd rather, uh, rather get caught with it than without it. Unfortunately, you know, got caught with it, but you know, that's the, that's the price, price that you pay. Now, was it a good decision? Uh, I don't know. Probably not, but that's, you know, given the, 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 the way the climate was then, um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was kind of, so it's a gamble but at the same note and shit was fucking going nuts man so you know i made my made my decision i stand by it and uh you know had to go away do my time and you know i can do, say you know i did my time and walk around with my with my head up and my shoulders back you know so um can't uh can't make that risk anymore because then they hit you with like that repeat repeat offender basically is what it is so and then that's too much time to look at, you know, like <laughs> you can look at it like a risk and reward thing. And, um, yeah, that, it would just be too much. So, uh, just have to keep it at, uh, keep it at a knife and, um, just, I guess, stay away from Walmart and, you know, most of civilization, I guess, if, uh, you know, yeah, world's just, man, world's going crazy, you know, just have to, you know, flip the t- coin toss and it's like, all right, fuck it, gotta go to the grocery store, you know. Yeah, no, look, that's that's brilliant to get clarification on that. And I think a lot of people can understand where you're coming from with that. And, you know, as you said, the world's going crazy. And something I specifically wanted to ask is you've, uh, for better or worse, been away pretty much all through COVID. And I wanted to ask you specifically, I remember seeing some news stories about how people in jails weren't really being protected or looked after properly in regards to COVID. Do you have any sort of experiences or insights around that at all? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, just flat out, like, you know, your, your society's unwanted. Um, I mean, just cut and dry, man. They don't give a fuck about you. You can live, you can die. They, they don't care. Um, you're in human storage. You're just, you're there. Um, not saying that every one of them is a cold blooded piece of shit. There are some caring people, but even, uh, even if they do, um, the rest of that machine isn't going to cater to that one person. Like, oh, well, 
you know, this guy's drowning in his own lung fluid over here. You might want to get him out. I'm like, ah, well, yeah, we'll, we'll look into it. Got to pencil them in or something. So, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, they were just, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty bad. Just cramming up, you know, people together. And it's got to the point where, like, especially right when it happened, they're just, like, looking in the units. They don't even want to come in. Um, it's looking like it's a room full of zombies. You know what I mean? So, I uh, just let everything fly. And like normally, like there's a big fight or you know, some people stabbing each other. They're going to run in and stop it. Not in there. It just, it just ran, ran fucking rampant. Uh, at first, there were times where they weren't even uh, beating us. They didn't even want to come near the door. Um, I guess they were just scared shitless, you know, about just the, you know, the thought of COVID. You know, it was spreading around pretty, pretty rapidly. And uh, you just had guys trying to look out for guys. To, to do the best but there's just nothing you can do you know it's about the extent of it is like try to get them some water out of a toilet sink to make sure that at least they got they can stay hydrated um there's really not much else you can do is no medications or anything like that so you just kind of just watch them die or you know get really sick and slowly recover and that's about it's about the end of that you know Wow, it really does sound as bleak as lot like what many of the news reports said. Yeah, yeah it was it was really uh, it was really bad, man, really really bad. And like you know, there'd be a TV on, and the whole time it's on, um, they have the fucking death toll number just going up, going up, going up, and everybody's just sitting there thinking like, oh fuck, you know, this is it, you know, and here we are, we're stuck in here. And there's nothing nobody can do. So uh, it was. It wasn't looking good. It definitely was not looking good for for everything. And I was like, man, you know, this can't be. This can't be the fucking end. It can't can't go down like this. So, um, you know, you just uh, just kind of you know cross your fingers and um, hope for the best and hope you don't uh, hope you don't catch that shit. But you you crammed in so fucking close. Like in this one unit. There's like 80 fucking people and there's two toilets, two fucking toilets, one for pissing and one for shitting. And there's nothing around them. They're just like kind of just sitting in the middle of the floor. And they're, they're, there's industrial ones, you know, so when you hit the butt, shoot this huge aerosol effect up in the air. So that's spreading shit. Um, there's no soap available, you know, like to give to you. So people that got no money or whatever they can't even afford to get some soap to take a shower, let alone wash their hands. So it was just filthy, fucking filthy fucking place too. So it was like, well, you know, it, it's definitely, definitely not looking good. But I didn't end up, uh, I didn't end up catching it. I was thinking, thinking like, you know, as all them years being at like Emerald Cup and everything, and that fucking Wook flu that would go around every year. I think like I built up some type of super immunity or some shit. Like I didn't. Uh, thank God, you know, I didn't. I didn't catch that shit. Who would have thought all those years of hitting random joints and blunts might have paid off for the cannabis community? <laughs> it might have, man. It might have. I don't know about everybody else, but yeah, yeah. I thought about. It. I was like, you know, I've been exposed to a lot of fucked up shit, man. So maybe my immune system will stay rock solid, and I won't, uh, won't, won't get this shit. Yeah, well, look, very happy to hear you You didn't end up uh, contracting it yourself. You know, it's sort of funny you mention that because when when like sort of in the early stages of when COVID came out, a research paper came out from China which basically showed that people who smoke cigarettes are at a reduced chance of contracting the virus. And I won't go too much into the details, but basically one of the receptors in your lungs gets down-regulated from smoking cigarettes and that's the same receptor the virus uses to enter the cells. And there was a lot of controversy around, like, do we announce this because we're worried, you know, is everyone going to start <laughs> smoking to avoid Yeah, COVID? I was going to say, this, this public health service announcement sponsored by Philip Morris. Sponsored <laughs> by Philip Morris, yeah. <laughs> oh, good stuff, good stuff. Well, I mean, look, obviously, having never experienced it myself, I say this with a, a grain of salt, but I, I'm sure there's rarely uh an abundance of overwhelmingly positive things to occur from being in jail but i was wanting to ask you did you have any sort of revelations or insights is is there any sort of new views on life you feel like you've sort of developed since having had this experience and now being free 
Um, not like the first time, because after the first time, yeah, definitely, you know, um, you get all that self reflection time and see things, do things, and then you get out and, you know, everything smells better, tastes sweeter, you know, all that good stuff. Um, so I already had that and that never, that never went away. Um, out of it, you know, I've always tried to, you know, make the best of every day, no matter what I'm doing or where I'm at. Um, and I just took the time to, uh, come up with ideas and I was doing a lot of writing uh, at nighttime when it was, uh, doors locked and it's safe and quiet and you're able to, you know, concentrate. And, uh, yeah, I was working on, working on writing a book and, um, like I said, just coming up with a, with a good, good solid, uh, game plan. To, so when I hit, hit back home, you know, I could, I could hit the ground running and everything. Um, and just like on the last bit, um, it's, a, it's the same. <laughs> Anybody that ever gets locked up and asked them the same thing, you really get to see who's with you and who ain't with you. Right. And, um, you know, it's, it's the same every time, you know, I got to see that on the last one and I got to see it on this one too. So it was good to like, you know, you see where people really stand. People are like really, really with you, you know, ride or die motherfuckers. Um, they're going to be there. Um, people that are against you, um, you know, of course they're going to take those opportunities to hate or talk shit or whatever. And then you're going to have people that you thought were going to be there that end up not being there. So a lot of people say, you know, it's a bummer, you know? And yeah, it is. It's like, it's bad. Don't get me wrong. Like, the, you know, it's hurtful. Right. But at the end of the day, it's like, well, fucking imagine going through life uh, with people that you think are like that just to find out that they're not way later down the road. And um, I'm always, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'm a thankful, thankful person. Just, it's good to know, you know? So that way when I do, move on like i you know i know who's who and that's that's a great that's a great fucking thing so out of all of it yeah just you know the time management coming up with you know things to do and then um you know there's a little working out you know the normal normal shit you know but um writing that was cool and just uh you know seeing like you know some real got some real solid motherfuckers uh in my corner you know yeah, so many uh, relevant topics you just touched on. We'll we'll come back and touch on some of them other other ones shortly. But I did want to follow up quickly on your book. I think you really generated a bit of a buzz because many people like myself have seen you know little bits and tibbits of the book come out through you know maybe you've posted a soil mix here, maybe you've posted a something else there. When do you anticipate it might be finished and what sort of things can people hope to learn from this book? Well, I hate to put a timeline on it because like it's all written, you know, and I got to type it up. My spelling is just atrocious, man. Like I'm just horrible. There's so many grammatical errors, I'm sure. Like, so um, I'm guessing, you know, like between typing it all back up, fixing all that um continuing to add to it because there was like some a lot of things i didn't have access to some art supplies so there's a lot of things i wanted to draw you remember my old sketches and everything i would draw up when i include stuff like that good charts and like things that i really need access to like printer and you know a computer to to, to do certain charts and things like that because it, it's like a big it's a reference type thing it's a how-to plus plus a reference. So you got to put all that together and then got to, uh, you know, have somebody look at, it, you know, last, you know, outside eyes, do any, you know, editing needed after that, then go through to the, to the public and some, and I couldn't, couldn't put a definitive timeline on it, but what people can look out of it is like, if you were, and maybe not necessarily new to growing, but you're setting up a new spot, um, you know, guiding people through literally setting up the space just to begin with plumbing, electrical, teaching a little bit of electrical, electrical theory, like things, safety. Um, you know, so it's like, if you got to delve into some electrical, you can go to that. And if you're comfortable with it, then by all means you can, you can go ahead and do it. 
or if you just want to know, you got your friend doing it, that's cool too. But literally setting up the space for success before you even get started, because so many people would just jump right into a space and start duct taping and super gluing and Velcro and all around them. And then they're struggling the whole time and never catch up because they didn't, you know, do the important thing first, get the space straight, the environment straight. Um, yeah, soil mixes, um, a couple of different regimens that people could choose from depending on your, you know, what's in your pocket, availability. You can mix and match, whatever. But trying to keep it very definitive, like this isn't like, you know, if you're reading this, it's like, just do this. Do this, do this, do this, do it this way, do it. Just don't deviate from it. After you do it, then at least you got you got a good you know, baseline of, you know, success. So if you do said, okay, well, I want to try this, try that. You can do that. But at least you know, like, hey, this did better, this did worse. You at least have your baseline. So it's good for the, like I said, the new, the new person wanting to, wanting to get into the organics and everything. Plus, like a lot of references and shit like that to, you know, um, you know, like a metric, metric conversion tables and stuff like that. They're, you know, it, it comes in handy. I mean, we all got smartphones and shit like that, but sometimes it's good just to have it, have it in a book real quick where you can just highlight it or go right back to it. And in a nutshell, that's it. I was going to include some of the other writing I did with it, but I think it's just too much. So we just keep that as one thing. And then the other book, just keep that as, uh, you know, a book, a book all the time. Uh, when you say writings, what sort of writings are we are we talking like Unibomber manifesto type stuff? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, just uh, personal personal stories, um, things like that. Um, you know, thoughts. You know, thoughts and you know, shit about uh, you know variety variety of different things. Just the world seen through you know another another set of eyes and a crazy brain, I guess. <laughs> I love it, like the the modern day Marcus Aurelius meditations. It sounds it sounds good, and I I want to put it out there now so everyone knows. I officially called dibs on editing the book. Oh man, you be my editor. <laughs> we got to do it, do it, like you know, like it's cool because like I still use use like in uh, color and favorite and stuff like that. So it's cool because I, I think y'all still do that over there too. So it, it'll work out. Sounds good. Sounds good. One of the fans submitted questions we got was they sort of wanted to know, first of all, was it going to be a more general or a specific book about growing? And you sort of answered, it's going to be more general. It's going to be like laying out all the options and people choose their own path. But one question that did get asked was for some of your more notable strains, particularly uh, people were asking about the hoodoo. I think that's just become a really popular one. Will you maybe provide like a, a specifically dialed in sort of info page or do you just want to keep it quite broad? Um, yeah, with something like a book like that, you kind of you kind of got to keep it broad. But with, with every pack that they got, there were like specific tidbits always on the back of every pack, like what to do week to week um, if you need to supplement more or less of something. Um, so they can kind of, you know, if they just, if you were to stick to like the baseline of like how I'm growing in this book, and it, it's not going to deviate from what I'm, I'm personally doing. So if a person isn't deviating from that, your environments, you know, in, the, in this, you know, span of acceptable, um, the same as mine, ultimately at the end, if you do everything, as, as said, me and this other person, we should have the same result. So anything in detail that I would write about it was already, you know, it was already on the back of that, back of that pack card. Yeah, certainly. I, I think that's one of the things people view you as notable for was giving that really sort of in-depth information around the cultivars. Well, the final sort of uh, fan submitted question we got around this topic was, they sort of asked the question of along the lines of like, you know, there's so many different ways you can skin a cat in relation to growing organically. They were just sort of wondering, obviously, you've got your own style. Do you have any thoughts on the alternative styles of growing? Like, you know, I know that you don't do like a pure no-till thing, but you do obviously do organic amended bases. Do you have any thoughts on the other styles or do you think it's just personal preference sort of thing? 
um, personal preference. I like what works for you. Um, you know, I've, I'll just, like I said, whatever person wants to do, um, by all means, like whatever works for you and your space on your budget, like no two people are exactly the same. So like, I just know I like the way, the way I do it. And I've tried, you know, different other ways. I just felt that for my space and my style and, you know, what, what I was doing was working best for me. Um, so like, and that's, that's the thing is like, there's like said, so many ways it's going to cut and a lot of people will get info from here and info from there and they kind of muddle it up. And sometimes it runs them into a, uh, into a jam. So that's why I was like, I wanted just to keep it very definitively. And like the difference is, is like, like I'm talking about different, different approaches to it. And when I say different approaches, it might just be, you know, here's, here's a regimen. But the alternative to that, if you don't have any money, you know, you can do this and, and still get to that same, same part. And even alternatively to that, if it's a dire emergency and, you know, it, it's going to be more with, um, you know, fixing problems is like, here's a source of this that you can go to that could be found at a, at a grocery store. You know what I mean? Um, things, things like that, a little MacGyver shit. Yeah, that's going to be very helpful, I think, because a lot of people will find them in those situations. Mm-hmm. So, Fucking Spanish, I guess, man. That's what we do. <laughs> I think one of the, it, it's sort of an obvious question to ask, but I, I, I want to ask it in a sense is, you know, people are also curious on top of my own interest. Do you plan in the future to return to your breeding to get Dominion back up and running, or do you plan to do things slightly different to how they were before you left? When the time's right, that is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, when the time's right, yeah, full speed ahead. Um, yeah, it's just the same thing. Um, you know, just uh, taking my time through it and not being in a rush and putting out putting out good work for people. Um, you know, and I got a lot of other, like you, you've already heard, you know, I got a lot of other little projects like the book. Uh, you even inspired me. I'm going to do my own little podcast, but it's going to be Fuck different. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a way, way different, uh, type approach and everything. And it's not going to be 100%, um, Hannah based, you know what I mean? So, um, I just know, you know, I met a lot of interest and know a lot of interest in cool people and, talk about different shit because like we're all into all types of different stuff it's like that the scene or industry or whatever you're into it's like people just look down like tunnel vision like oh that's all this person does like well no like i had so many other things surrounding this in my life that you know i like to do and stuff and like you know you, you know me so um you know, I'm into all types of cool, different little hobbies and shit like that, interesting, fun stuff. And uh, I think a lot of other people are too. Um, it's just that while we're talking about something we're really passionate about, that's all that really gets brought up, you know. But once you really get to talking and knowing somebody, you might find out, you know, hey, man, they were a professional bass fisherman or, or whatever. You, know, you just you never know. So um, from biochemist, to, you know, I can all, all man. And they'll, they'll just have to tune in and uh, keep, it, keep it suspenseful. Dun, dun, dun. That's exciting. Do you have? Do you plan to just sort of some point in the future, or any sort of plans specifically? Yeah, yeah. Here in the near future, I'm gonna start working on it, but I'm gonna jam a few out before I ever start putting them out. That way, I don't I don't miss any like lapses. So that way, every week, you know, people can look forward to it being there. You know. Maybe a follow-up question to the breeding one. A lot of people were interested. Do you have access to, you know, some of the old genetics, some of the old seeds, some of the old clones, or do you envision that when you do get things back up and running, it'll be sort of a fresh start, so to speak? Um, a little bit of both. So, like, I still have all everything I had um, backed up. So, you know, and I, and I did it in a fail safe fashion too. So it's like in two places. So if anything happened to one, the other one, the other one had it, you know, and cause you know, life happens, shit happens, especially when you eat regularly. Right. So, um, yeah, man. So, you know, I still have all, all that, all that stuff to, you know, continue any future work along lines. I might've already dealt with too. 
uh, to continue on. I had a bunch of projects that I had to put on hold that a lot of final steps were done and it was ready for that, that, that final, that final thing. So, um, you know, we, uh, I don't know, man, like it's just, I got a lot of plans man. <laughs> and you know me, I don't, I don't like to, uh, I don't like to give too much out. I don't want to show my hand too early. You know, just, you know how it is, you know how it is out there, man. Like people are, uh, always looking to copy or imitate rip off or whatever. So, uh, there's going to be some, there's going to be some new, some new things that, uh, I don't, I don't know how to yeah, say it without giving it away, so it'll just have to, you know, have to wait and see, right? I mean, on that train of thought, I think there's probably a lot of people who in the community have been sitting on some of your packs for a while, and I'm wondering do you have any recommendations for people, you know, like if they're sitting on a certain thing, like, oh man, you should really pop that one? Um, that was the thing. Like, you know, if you ever came to a show or talked to me personally, I'm like, well, you know, what should I get? I would say, well, what do you need? <laughs> like, what are you lacking in life? What are you, what are you looking for? You know, and I'd, I'd go from there. Is it a medical necessity or a certain smell or taste you're looking for? Or, you know, and, and go from there. So I would say just, uh, you know, did pretty, I did a pretty good job on descriptions and everything. So, um, kind of just look at and see what you, what you, what you, what you want, uh, what, what you're lacking in life. And, um, and, you know, just go from there. I would say like, if you just been sitting on them for a real long time, um, maybe get, if you got one that's like real old, maybe get those, get those popping first because they're not getting any younger. But outside of that, man, just, uh, just stick with, uh, stick with your gut and what you're, what you're wanting or what you want and need right now. Cause obviously they bought them for some, some kind of reason, you know? Yeah, definitely. And look, you gave me a great segue there because specifically, obviously all of the Dominion releases have been very successful, but specifically I've had a lot of people message me and tell me that they've found some gold and stuff out of the the Vault series. And I guess oh, yeah. I'm wondering, do you have any future plans for sort of some Vault stuff to, or do you think it'll be more like the strict Dominion stuff going forward? Well, the, I mean, that could happen again, but a lot of the Vault stuff was like, you had things that may have been intended like, all right, you know, I want to try to do this. I want to, I want to work this line or whatever. And then you go and you try it out. You make, you make a hybrid. You're, you're going to find a male out of there. You're going to go to the next step. You make the next step. You grow them out. You're like, wow, that totally did not work out at all. However, the original hybrid that you made for that male, the females are fucking made, right? So it's, it's like, well, they're not going to do anything else. That project's not going to move forward any anymore, but the shit all all aside was awesome. So you know, let's go ahead and let some let some people people enjoy that. So that was kind of the whole the whole thing with that. Yeah, definitely. I know specifically something I wanted to ask you, and I think I already know the answer. So I'm a, I'm a I'm sort of cheating myself here, but I remember you made some hybrids with. Um, Specifically, you did the eugenics male to the skunk Northern Lights five female the hazy haze. Yeah. Oh my god, that um, that that female like because I, I found a clone in those seeds, and it, in my opinion, it was one of my best clones for ages. And sadly, I, I lost it when I was moving. But I just thought, man, if there's ever another chance for me to find like a, a pheno like that, I would jump on it. Do you have access to that sort of plant anymore, or is it is it gone? Um, yeah, like I, I given some seeds to a friend that said they had a bunch of bunch of stuff of mine, and um, they do. So when uh when I get around to him, I got a fucking Amish buddy. He 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 loves that shit too. It was a long story. Like back when I was working at a steel mill in Pennsylvania, and he was getting the weed out of this this bar and shit. So. Ever since then, he's been kind of stuck on it. So, um, when I get to those, uh, I have to make sure that uh, old Queen's mail uh, <laughs> finds it finds their way to you. Uh, look, you're you're too kind. You're you're too kind. 
I don't, I don't know why this jumped into my head, but for some reason it did when you were sort of talking about where you've been in the past. I was wondering, I I'm not sure if you've been like 100% up to date with it all, but, I, you know, did you have any thoughts on the progression of the medical cannabis laws around Virginia, you know, because a lot of people have been excited about that since it's happened, and I was wondering, what's your thoughts? Oh, man, it's uh, super awesome what's going on there. Um I would say like just the biggest biggest thing I can say to them is like you fought hard to get it there. Don't stop fighting because just look at the history of every other state. Look at the progression of how 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 they work. It's basically the the corporate and government game plan. You know they want to they want to take take take. So just look at the mistakes of everyone before you, right? And uh, you know fight 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 that plan. You know, don't don't let them take that from you. It's hard to get there. Don't let them take it from you through the guise of, you know, different rec laws and shit like that. Um, they put a law in front of you. Like, don't don't just stop. Oh yeah, that, that sounds great. Read the whole fucking thing. Read the fine print. The devil's in the details. So you know, the second you forget history, like that's when shit starts to repeat itself. So just stay very adamant. Stay very vigilant, and you know, keep it keep it strong. You know, I know, I know how my bros and sisters are out in uh, Virginia. They, they're a rowdy fucking bunch, man. So, uh, you know, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna let nothing go easily. They just, you know, stay, stay vigilant and uh, don't, don't let them take shit. Some brilliant words of encouragement there. And I guess as a follow up, do you see a time when you might head back to Virginia to do your breeding work, or are the laws just not quite where they need to be to allow that yet? Yeah, it's it's it would still be a little too early on, but I, I saw like um the mode of action and like how, how things are supposed to be implemented. So like it's gonna be a couple of years down the road before it's there, but I'll definitely be back there just, just hanging out and you know, just you know, making trips and everything. But before I get a get to move back to the motherland, uh yeah, it's gonna be, be a couple of years before it's before it's proper ready. Yeah, sure. I mean, if we look at California under the same sort of lens and sort of analyzing the legislature they've brought in, a lot of people have been critical of 215, including myself, I'm sure yourself, for like a long time in California. And recently, I uh, had Ed Rosenthal on the show and he, he made an interesting point where he said, look, you know, could the laws be better? Sure. But at the end of the day, if you're keeping people out of jail for cannabis, that's a net win. No matter how much it could be improved, that you have to view it as a net win that we're keeping people out of jail for cannabis. And I thought, given your recent sort of, you know, uh, departure from jail, would you say that this is, you know, as much as it might be a bit of taste in people's mouth, because there's a lot of people who don't like the way their business has been affected because of it, would you agree with Ed Rosenthal in that sense, in saying that keeping people out of jail should probably be the number one priority? Um, yeah, of course, because, like, you're saying <laughs> the words legal, recreationally legal, like the word legal. How in the fuck is anybody going to jail over something they call legal? You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's kind of absurd to me. So yeah, like yeah, people definitely shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be getting hauled off for it. Um, does it does that happen? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, so um, and you know maybe it's changed since they first implemented it, but um, like Sun Grand Mids and a few other guys that are like real savvy with everything going on, these laws and everything, they were like my go tos. And since I didn't live in the state either. Um, you know, I'm, I'm only going to know what, you know, what's being shown to me and, you know, told to me. And, um, you know, when they had met or whatever, um, I guess like when they went rack, like some of the penalties for certain things changed and it, it was, it was worse, right. Than it was beforehand. So, you know, I, um, I don't know if that was in the proposal, or if that's actually what went through it was a long time ago. But I thought that, you know, I was like, damn, it's kind of kind of fucked up, man. And how is it going to be legal and still, like, somebody's going to go to the fucking joint over it? Like, fucked up, you know? 
Yeah, you, I mean, you raise a brilliant point there, you know. The, it's almost a contradiction, right? The fact it's legal, but people still go to jail, especially when you think about the, the Sackler family, the, the guys who put out, what is like, Oxy and stuff. And it's like, those motherfuckers aren't going to jail. And yet, people with a few pounds, a few plants over that, yeah, it's, it's such a contradictory, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, big, big time, man. So, um, so, yeah, like, yeah, I definitely believe, like, nobody should be tossed tossed down over over a plant like if you want to like make the argument like well they're a non-regulated grower and they're growing and doing all this well i don't i don't see that as a crime like you know but if they want to like you know further it and say well the reason why is like dude was making a million dollars and not paying taxes so, okay not paying taxes on revenue okay cool right of course, like dude broke the law, what whatever. But you know, everything before that, like if you want to grow a fucking plant, you should be able to grow a fucking plant, you know. Um and that's just that's just my my opinion on it, you know. No, I, I think that's that's a, a very insightful take for sure. Another one that's weird is uh like Washington DC, it's not a state, it's a district of Columbia, like where they make the laws and everything you know it's where the white house is and all that so since it's not a state it's governed by federal law um so the other argument is like oh you know and i'm going through that now that's the reason i I can't blaze i'm on federal probation so since weed's federally illegal um they say it doesn't matter what the state because the feds are going to trump over you know what the state says or whatnot so okay so how in the fuck is weed still federally illegal when it's recreationally legal in Washington, D.C., a land governed by federal law? Like, riddle, riddle me that. Yeah, yeah, it's very contradictory, isn't it? Very, yeah, very, very contradictory, very frustrating, you know, just to think about it, you know? It's like we're almost in 2022 and still having that, still having that talk. Like, why? Like how, like how, how is this still, still a thing? You know. Do you foresee a time in the near future when you know some of these inconsistencies get ironed out, or do you think it's just going to nagle on forever? Um, I think as long as you got a lot of um, a lot of the old guys that are still hanging in there, um, that are influenced by pharma and stuff like that, wow. lobbyists and everything, special interest groups. You're going to have a lot of foot dragging, even though if they know damn right that they're dead wrong, they're still going to do it because, you know, money or promises, or whatever. And it's going to take a while. A lot of those guys start getting out or dying or whatever. Um, you know, it's weird because like a lot of the people that are lawmakers and everything, they're like they're really old people, really old, old school ways of, excuse me, old school ways of thought. And they're kind of, um, you know, they're kind of fucked up. Um, or, you know, I mean, it's like proven fact, you know, they, they take all the special interest money and stuff and see where it comes from. And it's like, yeah, of course, you know, like Merck Pharmaceuticals is like super huge and, you know, donate all this money to this person. They're very adamant about like, hey, you know, no, I don't think it should be legal. Well, why? Oh, well, you know, the kids, kids. And like, oh, actually, it shows that, like, you know, the smoking has gone dramatically down by underage people, blah, blah, blah. And, like, here's, here's some facts for you. No, no, just, no, I don't think so. Because, uh, you know, does I say so? So, yeah. Maybe next time, boys, you know, that type of shit. It's, it's insane, isn't it? How many people are guided by just feelings or religious views or contextual society stuff of like yeah it's wild yeah yeah it's really uh really really insane man and especially they keep people like pitted against each other all the time too um you know division you know that's a, that's a good way to, to keep doing what you're doing you keep people divided from coming together and you know that's that's a that's an old school trick they do it every day people still falling for that shit <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe we just need to get our own cannabis lobbyists and get some equal representation. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be cool. Um 
you know, a lot of money for that, you know, a whole lot of money for that. We're talking a lot, millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars that they're pumping all the time. So, like, you got to be able to keep up with that. That's, that's, a, that's a hard thing to do, man. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because you sort of painted uh, an actually quite a clear picture in my mind there where a lot of people in the community are really critical of brands that aren't striving to be the absolute pinnacle. You know, we always hear about how people say, oh, if you want to be the Bud Light of cannabis, go for it or whatever. And you sort of just made me realize maybe we do need more of that so that there are people who can throw millions of dollars at lobbyists because maybe maybe that's what you need, like, you know, the mass production mid-tier because maybe, yeah, like, you know, maybe Jungle Boys is never going to do it themselves. <laughs> well, I think, like, that, that's the thing is, like, people automatically associate anybody doing it big with mid. Because, I mean, you know, that. Primarily, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of how it is. That's not to say that there aren't going to be some people that come up and just fucking kill it and do it the right way, you know, um, you know, and do it and do it without any like outside like corporate money. And there's people that self start, but you know, that's the, that's the bad part about being a self starter is like you don't have all these investors, you don't have all that money, you're like fucking grinding out grassroots to, to make it big, right? So, and there just hasn't been enough time for a lot of these people to shine. They're out there slugging it out and like they're, they're getting there, but um, you know, that, that time's still gonna, it's still gonna come. And I think, yeah, when you do get there and it's not going to be like, you know, he said the Bud Light weed. I mean, yeah, you know, it's right. But you know, it's not to say somebody can't, you know, take what they're doing and still keep quality high and then also keep production high. Like there's ways to do it. It's just, a lot of the chads that had all that big investment money that went in and just threw, you know, millions of dollars at it and blew up big. They're not, they're not craft type growers. They're not really growers at all. You know, they're just kind of hiring mediocre people for a mediocre pay, which is going to end up being a mediocre job. So, um, it's the same, like skilled labor isn't cheap. Cheap labor isn't skilled and they're paying cheap, man. So you get, kind of get what you pay for. So, but I think I think we'll see a change, you know, in the in the near future, and especially when you start looking like states like Virginia coming online. Um, you know, there's a lot of farm boys there and, and girls, uh, including y'all, um, that really know how to they know how to do big things, you know. So I got a I got a lot of hope, uh, and I got a lot of faith uh, faith in Virginia. Hell yeah, that's exciting. If we just sort of uh, change the topic for a minute, I was hoping to get into some breeding stuff because probably the the majority of questions that were submitted by listeners were related to that. And I think, you know, if I sort of amalgamate many of the questions slash concerns together, I think I can sort of embody it with the question of, you know, have you changed your mind at all in regards to the direction you want to take your breeding? Because in the past you've always felt that there's a certain importance around certain cultivars, like notably sort of some of the chem family, the skunks, for example. You've worked extensively with some of these lines, 88G13. Do you think that you're going to continue with that direction or do you have an inkling to welcome some new blood into the Haram? Well, I do. Uh, I don't have any uh, anything really uh against anything new and there are going to be some new things but um yeah man so you know yeah definitely some of the new um back then you know i just had i had goals in mind you know start off with what you want a goal and you know go from there and i had some some things i wanted to see things i wanted to do and some goals and i worked hard toward those goals and then i made those goals happen so um there's some some that aren't aren't finished you know that i still got um so well you know pick up there but yeah there's a whole bunch of other things i'd like to do and yeah it involves some some new things something new something old type of deal yeah nice i mean is there any specific lines of yours that you're really itching to get back into or it's going to be more open platter and evaluate um well i wanted to uh i wanted to finish up Primarily, like a couple of a couple of projects that I had, to, like I said, I was on that last step. So I want to get them knocked out first and foremost. After that point, um, I got a couple in mind, but 
I think I said, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to show my hands too early, man. Yeah, no, understandable for sure. Well, I had um, some questions from listeners who were hoping maybe you could give them a little bit more sort of of an explanation or just maybe some thoughts on some of the, the packs they got from you. And one of the ones that caught my eye was someone was interested to know, what are the differences in your mind between, say, the skunk band and the dead band, given, you know, they are fairly similar? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very similar. Um, one's, one's given more, more of the narcotic knockdown stone and you're getting a difference in the flavonoids, you know, more the, more the hashy, hashy, funky orag side of things. And also like structure and girth, like heft to it too. That dead band was definitely had the more, the more heft to it. Um, skunk band had more of that headband type sour uh, consistency to the bud. Um, that band definitely had more of the more of the knockdown, knockdown type stone too. Yeah, beautiful stuff there. Do you have any plans to re-release any of the lines, or you just want to focus on new things going forward? Well, there were certain things that I made, and I thought I made enough. But the problem was like every not a problem, I guess a good problem is like people were really digging the work. And as it was like it was catching on as I'm doing it. So they they get onto this new thing to them, but it's like it's been out for six months or a year and they're they're gone. You know? Um, and I was just all about moving forward, moving forward. Um, so there were certain ones that were very exceptional that I was like, it's 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 worthy of the time. To you know, take it to an F three or an F four, and and put it put it back out there. You know, so there are there are some of those that that I would definitely go that route with. That's that's going to be a hopeful answer to a lot of people listening because I was going to say I, I did a quick little tally of the strains that got mentioned from the listeners and the top three that people had questions about or were just in general really excited about was the polecat backcross, which I think might sort of fall into the category you just mentioned where, you know, people only really realized about it, you know, months after the release. But the other two that made the list was the local skunk and the hoodoo. Were those mm-hmm. some of the lines that, you know, you were thinking in that last answer? Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Those are definitely one. Screaming Eagle definitely, definitely would make the list for me too. Cause, and you see, like, a lot of people don't know but people that do know, they, you know, they know. So, um, yeah, that's definitely a, another one, you know. There's only so many people had that one as well. Yeah, nice. I've, I've actually got a personal question for you that I've been wanting to ask you for a while, but I never got the opportunity. But basically... Pantene, um, dude. Me- use Pantene. <laughs> that's what I use, man. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. That's how you keep it silky <laughs> smooth. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, I ended up growing out uh, some of your ChemD cross C99 feminized. Yeah. I found this Pheno, which to me is like bang on Chem91. And I just always was like, man, that's crazy. It's like ChemD and C99 and I'm getting this plant that has like no real sativa characteristics or influence in the effect. And not only that, it, it sort of tastes and looks like Chem91 more than the ChemD. And it got me wondering, I was like, do you think, you know, because some people try to say maybe the Chem D actually came from the Chem 91. And I thought that's the only thing I could think of, which maybe explained it a bit. Do you have any thoughts or do you just think, look, the Chem D and the Chem 91 are similar? Like that's that's it. Well, D 91, you know, being related, you know, yeah, of course. And that is that is the correct line of thought. But let's let's take it back a step further. All right. So. All right. When I was working with Princess, when we were doing the doing the Brothers Grimm thing, you, you smoked the bud and everything. You've seen it. You've seen it grow. And there was no question in my mind that that magical, you know, bag seed or whatever was an, an, an NL hybrid. Like, that, that Princess reminded me a lot and women like. So, when, when Soul or Sly, who, whomever, was doing that... Um, they, 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 they chose a male to start that cubing process, right? And it was Sheba skunk, right? And that's Northern Lights and skunk. 
me personally, I felt always felt like NL Skunk would be a, a good nominee for the, the mystery pollen donor to make him anyway. I was just always my gut, and you know, I still still feel that way. I still think that way. All right, so he takes that and he hits it. He hits that princess. He does his cubing process, right? So now you you got those genes in the pool. So and to me, like when I smoked princess that that first time this is fucking kind of narcotic fucking weed man uh, i got nothing nothing sativa out of it basically a shorter plant doesn't stretch crazy it doesn't it def- definitely doesn't scream sativa at me like at all so with having those genes in the pool and then that ultimately that clone that was used was just i mean you remember man you, you you've been to my shop <laughs> you saw me growing it and doing it right you've had the bud you smelled the jars um it, it was fucking funky man kind of you know like gassy fucking nasty nasty smell to it you know and it was like as close to that princess it wasn't exactly like it by any means you know but you know it was as close to it as i'd seen in any anything else so having that as that pollen donor and selfing that that plant and using that reverse pollen to hit Kim D, you know, it's passing passing everything I could out of that out of that original female that that could be passed on. So by getting all those genes back in that pool, that doesn't you know it's like no, no surprise to me that you would see phenos that are spot on. You know, some more like you know the the mother you know, the Chem D, some being like uh, the Cindy, and then, you know, blends of the two, ones that lean slightly one way or the other, but also expressing the, the, the parents and, the, and the, uh, the sisters, if you will. So that, that doesn't, doesn't surprise me, surprise me at all. Yeah, no, that's a brilliant explanation. And I, I think I really resonate with how you were describing Princess as more of an Indica. I think... Yeah, you definitely notice that disorientating factor of the high. Yeah, big time, big time, man. It would it would slump you, slump you back, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's it's only now that you say it that I think to myself, if no one ever told me, and you put princess and genius like the buds at least next to each other, I definitely would never have thought they were related. Yeah, and with. With genius, you know, I was like, if I had my guess, like it reminded me so much of Super Soul Haze. I mean, so much, man. And, um, you know, so that led me to think, like, hey, maybe, you know, maybe it was like a, maybe like an NL, NL Haze or something like that. That, that was the donor. Like, there ain't no telling what, what happened. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be a bag of, you know, Jack Hare or whatever. But, you know, that, that mystery donor uh, gave us something like like uh, like Princess. And that one was so different. So that's not to say, what if there was more donors, right? What if it wasn't just one donor? There's multiple pollen sources. Mm, yeah, I guess that's actually a possibility that's never really been discussed very much, has it? No. Nah. Like, I sat there thinking many a night, like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, especially off such a small number of seeds popped. You just wouldn't expect to see that variation. Right. And this wasn't like, you know, bud that he grew. This is purchased bud from a coffee shop in Amsterdam. So, who's to say, like, it's not, you know, a bunch of different buds homogenized in a, in a tray from a harvest. And some plants were near one side of the room and then the other side of the room. And, you know, one got hit with one, one got hit with the other, and one bud had some seed, and the other bud had some seed, but two different plants, two different pollen donors. I think that might be a, a, a very well new possibility, right? Yeah. I mean, it makes, makes sense to me, you know? So I felt that, like I said, that the, the genius was a lot like Super Silver Haze and... The uh, the princess, I mean, is just totally, totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hugely, hugely. Mm, yeah, you got man. me thinking now. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, man. 
while we're on the topic, I mean, the last the last episode we recorded together was a number of years ago, and I think at the time it was still pretty fresh and raw, so we didn't really delve into it. But a lot of people have been wondering for the longest time the, the circumstances in which you departed Brothers Grimm, and a lot of rumors floating around about sort of, you know, m- money being owed and things like that. Would you yeah. be willing to set the record straight on why you decided to part ways with Brothers Grimm and maybe some of the circumstances? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so the guy wasn't who I thought he was. And, and that, that shit happens. You know, if you talk to somebody on the internet or whatever, that's one thing. But being around somebody, seeing them in their everyday life, and working with them and seeing how they interact with people. Um, just, I guess, to be uh, be as nice as I can about it. Like, I didn't jive at all with the guy. And um, just some really, really, really bad practices, um, ethics, um, how he treated people. Um, and it just turned into, like, mess after mess, after mess, um, problem after problem after problem. And we're just talking, just dealing with people here. Um, and it just got to that point where it's just it, so frustrating. <laughs> so, so frustrating. Um, and then when it came to the work and everything else, um, it, it just, it would, it, there would be just things that would really, 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 really piss me off. Um, so it got to the point was like, just, just please just handle, um, you know, uh, talking to vendors and stuff like that. But, you know, please don't, don't just start cussing at them and flipping out on them. It feels like somebody owes you something. Um, quit being cocky, quit the egotistical stuff, be a little more humble, man. Um, I'll handle, I'll handle this. Don't, don't worry. You got the right guy. Um, but you, you know, you got it, you got to tighten up. And if you, if you're going to go out, you do these shows, you handle the banking and the shipping and all, um, that's cool. It's cool by me because that's what you like to do. You like attention. Uh, you like these shows and everything. Um, do, do you, you know, stick to, stick to that. But just when you're doing these shows, like, please stop offending people because every time you're at a show, my DM box fills up like this fucking prick. You will not believe what he said or what he did. Um, <laughs> uh, this, you know, I could go on with story after story after story of people at shows like where I would go. And they would just straight up come up to me. He's like, yeah, I had this big fat wad of money. I wanted all this from me. I cannot rightly buy this from you knowing that any of that money is going to go to that, to that guy. And I'd have to like, I, <laughs> I understand. Um, it just very rude guy, you know, I, I don't know how else to put it. And it just got to the point where like, even like him just doing shows was just, it was just a bad, just a bad deal, man. And I was like, this is just something I can't, I can't continue um, being associated with. Um, I can't really be around this dude. It's just so frustrating. And that was the thing is like around me, like to me personally, right. He wasn't, he wasn't like that. You know, it's just to to other people, but um, it just a very, very frustrating, very frustrating thing. So, um, so I decided, I was like, look, man, um, at one point he's like, look, I want to, I want to bring on this guy. Uh, He wants to buy, um, you know, part of the company. He wants to, you know, be doing this, that, this and that. Um, And we need to do this. (laughs) We need to do that. And I was like, okay. All right. So you just, you just, came from a show where I got a whole DM box full of, full of messages saying like, you're blowing them off, being rude to them. And you couldn't be bothered because you're flirting with some girl in the booth next to you. And um, furthermore, you couldn't be bothered to drop the seeds off at a, at the hotel. So you parked it in some restaurant and busted your glass and got all that stolen. And now you're coming back with some guy I don't even know or never met saying he's, he's buying his way into the company and this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to do it. So I was like, wow. Okay. All right. It seems like there's been quite a bit uh, over this over this weekend. I was already at, at my edge anyway. So I'm like, I'll tell you what. How about this? 
you buy whatever you want and you uh rick you're you're you can buy the rest of it like i'm i'm good so what you're gonna do if you're cool with this you you got bankers and lawyers and all that shit you have them draft up a good contract figure out whatever his percent was going to be use that as a multiplier for you know 50 percent you know give me that right <clears throat> so he's like all right cool so about Two days later, he comes out. He's got a contract or whatever. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, "All right, yeah, that's that's cool. Uh, that'll that'll work, you know." So, um, and it's you know it's pretty cut and dry. So, sign off on it. Boom. Uh, payment one happens, you know, upon execution, and I didn't ask for everything at once. I'm like, "It's a good chunk of money, man." So, you know, we'll 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 split this down into quarters, you know, over over a year. <clears throat> so I'm like, it makes it easy for you two to continue doing what you're doing, uh, do whatever type of marketing, whatever, man. Do y'all, um, y'all got this? You said you got this. Cool. So, time for payment two comes around, and he's like, oh, I don't know, like sales are down, this and that. I'm like, look, dude, the last post we had on media, um. You posted one post after all these months, and it was middle of the evening on day two at a show. How in the fuck <laughs> do you think that's that's promotion, right? And I go down like this list of like 13 or so things, like this is what you're doing wrong. Do this instead, do this instead, do this instead, blah, blah, blah. All right, I'll do that. I was like, but look, you know, all jokes aside, like you, you, you need to pay me my money, like flat out. So, it takes some time, like some weeks or whatever, but but he does. Okay, we're cool. Then on the next one, he's just flat out. I can't make money. Um, I don't feel that I owe you anything, and I'm I'm just I'm not I'm not going to pay you. I was like, yeah, that's that's not going to happen, man. So, you know, you you can't go and buy a fucking nascar race car right and you're buying that to to compete but you don't know how to race a race car you can't tell people that you suck as a fucking race car driver and you're not winning and that and be like oh i'm not paying you for it because i can't win no man like you you got you got to pay like whatever failures are happening that that's on you right now you're not doing any new work you're not promoting it anytime you do talk to people they're they're <laughs> incredibly offended and you're, you're not going good for a lot of, lot of other reasons, which none of which have anything to do with me. So he's just like, yeah, yeah, not, not going to do that. So I was like, okay. So now I'm like, well, I need to, need to figure, some, figure some things out. So basically, um, that's, where, that's where it ended off was uh, right there and uh, just trying to, you know, figure it out. Um, you know, I, I'm not big on courts and, and going, going that route. But, uh, if you go the alternative route, you're going to find yourself in court anyway for something altogether different. So, um, you know, so I don't know, um, you know, maybe try to talk to the dude again now that I'm, now that I'm home and then, you know, I have to figure it out from there because I, you know, I really don't like going through, uh, you know, any type of court court system and stuff like that. You know, I've just always been like, you know, you should just, be a man of your word and honor, honor your agreements and, you know, do it like that. Um, but then at the same time, I'm looking, I'm like, wow, you're buying an awful lot of lavish shit for a guy that doesn't, doesn't make any money. So, hmm, all right. So I didn't have much, uh, much sympathy in that regard. So he said, hopefully I'll talk to him again. Um, maybe shit's changed or maybe he has a different outlook on, on things. I don't know. So we'll just have to have to see. That provides a lot of clarity to the situation, and like he's still selling shit that I made, like back then. Like I, somebody showed me the other day, yeah, like one eight seven for sale, and he just renamed it "Murder by Numbers," and it's just like old seed stock that I was supposed to get paid for that never did. You know, somebody showed me. He's like, yeah, I had uh, Polcat F twos, and I was like, wow. And he was like, yeah, name the strain, and I'll give you a pack. And somebody like popped on his like, hey, I got a name for you. How about Duke's work? I was like, oh, golden. Huh. Best name ever. That's how dude, you know, that's how dude operate, man. Like I said, from outside looking in, like, and I'm not like a drama guy. 
I don't want to like air out a bunch of shit like on, you know, Instagram or something like that. You know, it's like I can handle these things. So by that same token, though, is like people don't don't know who and, and what's going on because a lot of those people they mess with him. You know, they're all newer people. You know, they don't know who the fuck I am, which is this is fine. You know, but um, they they have no idea of you know what the past has been and shit like that and you know nobody's a mind reader so so it's like you know one of the things like do you air that out you know all over the place or do you just you know just work through it and you know call it call it a day because i don't want to like you know put a bunch of negative negative shit on there you know and especially if it's something i just need to hash out with a person individually um you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do that too you know, that's just the way, the way I was brought up. Um, so yeah, you know, but I guess, you know, like I said, I'm glad you're glad you asked that because, um, after all these years and everything, uh, yeah, I figured, fuck it. You know, you might as, might as well let people know, know what's up with the dude. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe the, the silver lining of this is that we did have a lot of people ask, will we ever see Cap G again? I think it was one of the most hottest strains when it hit the, the scene that year. Well, it was only 40. Yeah, it was only 40, uh, 40 packs of it. And you remember at the, at the show, man, like it was, it was gone. You know, a lot of it was even like spoken for, like right off the bat. So um, with, uh, with that going on, it was weird because later it was like, you know, yeah. I saw like, you know, it seemed like 200, uh, 200 packs of it in circulation. Like, man, that's, uh, that's a coincidence. Awful, awful strange. It's very peculiar. So, um, but the thing was with that, um, it was, it was just a beginning step, you know, moving forward to, to making that Dominion G. So no, nah, I don't, I don't feel I'll, you know, back it all the way up. Um, you know, I kind of hit my goal, you know, where I wanted to be. Yeah, certainly. I mean, as a bit of a follow-up, and it, it might be hard for you to pick just one, but I was curious to know, what do you think is the most under-recognized Dominion strain in terms of quality where, like, you know, maybe the sales don't reflect it, but it, it's truly a killer? Man, there were, <laughs> man, there were quite a, there were quite a few. Um, the Granny Skunk was one with the Virginia Beach Afghani. Um that one was fucking killer, but nobody knew what Virginia Beach Gandy was. It's like people only know what they want based off of kind of what they like. And that wasn't like some big circulated thing. Like people in Virginia would eat it up because everybody knows, knows what the fuck that is. But everybody else like, eh? I don't know what that is. You know, they, they just keep it keep it moving. Like, oh, well, Kim Dog, yeah, I, I like that. I know, I've heard that one before. So they'll go, go that way. So that was probably the most the most slept on one. Yeah, no, that's that's a great answer. I remember having smelt that, and it was it was almost equally as impressive as the Cap G. But I think many people smelt that Cap G and were just sold. Yeah, man, that was like nasty, garlicky, rubber, skunky funk to it, man. That was that was some good that was some good chip, man. And you know that was something that that was lacking around. Everybody was going like super fruity shit, and you know going just for like straight straight him you know um at the time at least and it was you know something different you know and something that hadn't been hadn't been in plenty i guess you know for a long time so it's cool to be like yeah you know that those those types of things would still you know strike a strike a thing with people's nose and be like yeah that's that's something i like that you know so along with all the all the work coming after that and you know uh, projects I did along with it, it was cool to see like yeah you know it's not just me or a group of friends that are digging it like a lot of people are digging it. And after I've come back, I've had so many people who are like they bought all that stuff up, but they didn't pop it. And I guess while I was gone, a lot of people were popping back, and their DM box filled up like most amazing shit ever. This fucking skunky fucking gas chem shit I got going on with this one, keeping it forever. Thank you so much. He's doing outdoor, you know, just a lot of good success stories, happy people. They're like, yeah, I bought them just because. And yeah, I've just been kind of sitting on them. And <laughs> just, just now, years later, you know, getting into it. So it was kind of cool, cool to see all that good feedback. You know, I was getting some from people 
you know, immediately jumping into the work, but there was so much more that just people were sitting on it and now coming back and then showing me pictures that, you know, from last year or whatever, year before, or here recently, just going, like, man, this is a killer, you know, people with the hoodoo, and the polecat, Dominion G, stash plant, purple dahlias, like, uh, sangrias, all, all that shit, man, just fucking like, man, you please keep doing, keep doing what you're doing, you know, I'm, I'm down whenever you're ready. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you just named a few strains I wanted to ask you about, but before we get there, I just want to quickly loop back because you mentioned the VA Afghani. We actually had a few people ask about that, and the sort of common thread was, do you have any information on the backstory around it at all? See, like <clears throat> that's always been like a like a mystery mystery plant, you know. Um, I'm gonna do a live on it at some point with a few different people from back home now that they can. They can talk freely on it. Um, but man, there's so many, there's so many stories. Um, <laughs> you know, as with any, anything, anything with any lore, man, you got, you got a whole lot of shit. Um, I always felt it's, it's a whole lot simpler <laughs> than, you know, a Vietnam vet. And, uh, I can't say, uh, what's the new word? A uh, little person. Um, uh, like, uh, there's been some fucking crazy, crazy stories I heard, but I think at the end of the day, it's just, some old seed bank uh, Afghani stock and got found a really, really killer one. And it stood the test of time. It's like anything else that's real good. If it's been around that long, there's a reason why, you know, people aren't going to risk, uh, you know, getting hemmed up and going to prison over some, over some swag. <laughs> yeah, certainly. I mean, but it stood the test of time, which I think is sort of a, a testament to its, its quality. Yeah. Strong shit, man. That's uh, potent. Definitely. I definitely remember the first time I tried it with you and it was everything you said, you know, very sort of paranoia inducing for an Afghani, which was cool. Yeah, man. And then your just eyes just want to shut. <laughs> you just want to sit down. <laughs> um, we had a, someone who hails from VA as well ask the question, did you ever try the Skylar skunk from Nelson, Virginia back in the day? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the thing, like I mentioned that on a couple of shows, I, I mentioned it once, like before I even went away and I, I like, kind of in a slip. You're like, what's that? I was like, nothing. Don't worry. There's nothing to see here. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, 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 I have. And, um, had a, had a buddy that used to live out that way. And, you know, he, he knew the old dude with it. You know, they got, they got the client of it and all that shit. And, um, fucking, fucking killer dude. But more on that later. <laughs> uh, okay i mean is it is it like a standard skunk but better or is it very is it sort of different to a normal skunk um it's definitely more more on the indica side of of things um aside from the the, the strong smells and all that shit um very 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 strong narcotic uh doesn't grow huge stretchy type type plants you know so um it's definitely, definitely more in that blend of leaning a little more on the uh, on the indica side of stuff, and uh, just absolutely fucking stanky, man. It's a stinker, you know. It's got that lingering effect too on the mouth, like a, a kind of coffee bean hashy, uh, slight skunk flavor um, to it, and it kind of lingers, almost like that sour diesel effect a little bit. So it is definitely, definitely a fucking killer. It's great outside too. That's that's awesome to hear. I mean, if we loop back to your answer before you mentioned the the purple dahlia, among other things, and we had a few questions about it. I guess people must be sitting on packs and they're sort of curious, you know, what sort of things can they expect out of it and what's your thoughts on the purple dahlia overall? Um, really good. It's just like I think like a like what put people off is you know I, I put a warning on the pack if something's like subject to her and due to something i'm gonna i'm gonna put that on there so that way you know somebody can avoid it so you got a lot of people oh it hurt i'm like well yeah a lot of shit will if you you know if you if you do something fucked up and this one has a little bugaboo about this so just don't do that and you should uh you should be cool you know and out of that honesty a lot of people like no nah, nah, nah. so like cool like you can go 
buy this other shit. Like, you know, it's everybody will tell you that's going to hurt them out, but they're not going to tell you. So they get you, get you money or whatever, but it's, it's, it's whatever, man. But out of the, out of the phenotypes, um, they were just these, these blends, man. Um, and, it, and it's not like something that's like, oh, you got to pop a bunch of packs for it. is multiples in, in every pack out of the females that were incredibly, incredibly dark purple and this black Screaming Eagle style frost on it that just tasted like fucking great candies, man. It fucking tastes awesome. And the effect on it was fucking divine, man. I really, yeah, really like that one. That was another like that another ever overlooked one, or maybe looked at and just you know, just just throwing to the side instead because you know they had worries or whatever. Yeah, I mean it's interesting because I remember when I smelled uh, the jar of it at the cup a few years back. I think that was one of the ones I was most impressed by. I'm having trouble remembering if it was that or the sangria punch, but I think it was the purple dahlia. Yeah, the purple dahlia was definitely very extremely dark purple and had like that eagle type bump but purple if that that made any sense at all purple grapey also had that that citrusy incensey type type plump blended in with it um the sangria very very frosty stuff but i mean yeah yeah, it's not spot on it is sangria punch like spot on and everybody smelled it was like holy shit (laughs) that is that's sangria punch i was like yep that's why we get the name (laughs) <laughs> you know yeah okay there you go well yeah, i mean if we move on sadly since you've sort of been away on hiatus uh there's sort of been a bit of a change in the cannabis landscape and specifically we've we've sadly had to bid farewell to two friends of both the industry but yourself as well you know notably monty sub cool and and also bog yeah and josie wales too yeah, Josie, well, that also happened. And I guess my sort of question is, how does it feel to come back and to see that the cannabis landscape has changed a little bit? Or do you feel like it actually hasn't that much? Um, And it's weird because, like, to me, it's kind of like the grow room thing. If you're in there every day, you don't see a whole lot of change. But if you go in once a week or something like that, you see a lot of dramatic change. So from being, like, totally, totally away from it and coming back, I'm in. Mean, it seems about the same, like honestly, but like that's just as far as like you know, maybe Instagram goes. I haven't been to a show or anything like that. Now, from what I've seen going on, yeah, I mean, the shows are definitely um, <laughs> going downhill, I guess. But I, I already <laughs> saw that coming many, many years ago. That last one that I was at, you were at, or whatever. You remember when they pulled me? You're like, yeah, you're not on that panel anymore and you know, all that. And you're like, yeah, they just want me to interview somebody else. I'm like, I'm cool, bro. You know, oh, so, man. Um, you know, I, I saw it, you know, even coming before that point. But then once that, that show happened, I was like, yeah, it's bad. So, you know, I hate to see it in a few years. You know, now I have kind of vicariously, you know, through others and they're showing their videos and shit. So, um, yeah, it's just, you know, other than that, I mean, yeah, it's basically the same. Uh, as far as like you know, people passing away, you know, I had a project at that show because uh, me and Bog, we ended up, uh, we shared a booth space or whatever. And I thought it was like real fucked up. It was like people were lined up and they didn't even know who he was. So I'm like, no, like, you know, get you need to see this, man. You need, you need to get stuff around. This is like, God, like I grew his shit. Like, if I literally had space and time, I would continue growing this shit. Um, like you, you, you really, you really need to, you know, get this guy. So I ended up like kind of bending, bending for him as well. And just overall, just a really, really good dude too. Um, so I was like, look, man, like we need to, we need to do something together, you know? So um, we came up with a, a good, solid, solid plan of like two things that would really drive together. That would be, knock your socks off. So I'm like, yeah, cool. We'll, we'll get to it, you know? And, um, you know, as time goes by, it's like, all right, well, it's about that time, buddy. And that shit all went south for me and then I went away. Finally died and I'm like, oh, fuck, you know? Uh, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. And that's like probably one of the worst things about when friends or people you know or care about or think highly of when they die. 
Um, you don't you don't get that chance to say goodbye or you know anything else that you wanted to say to them. So um, and the same thing goes for you know Josie and you know Monty and everything. It's like um, you know you wish you maybe you'd said more uh, when the, with the time you had. So just for everybody, you know, just remember, you know, it's like it can happen at any time. So uh, you know. Um, Tomorrow's not promised, right? So, yeah, definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. But cool thing is, uh, his son, his son's keeping keeping things kind of going, and uh, I'm gonna get with him, and you know, we're still still gonna make that make that happen. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome to still see something happen because yeah, Bog Junior and Pat are still still around and need to be taken care of. Yeah, man. Yeah, exactly, and it can be a good honor honor to honor to the guy, you know. Yeah, certainly. Well, I probably should have asked this a bit earlier, but I, I was curious to know, do you have any advice for people who, maybe not in your exact circumstance, but just sort of, you know, trying to get everything back together, dust themselves off, get back on the horse, so to speak. Have you got any advice in that respect? Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, don't be hard-headed. And, or I mean, do be hard-headed, I should say. Uh, refuse to stop refuse to lose, refuse to give up. And as your mistakes come across, as long as you're learning from them, you're, you're becoming stronger. You're becoming better. Um, don't, don't give up. Uh, just whatever is faulting you along your way, you just got to sit back and look at it outside, looking at it and really analyze things and then go from there. So that way, when you, when you do succeed, it'd be the best thing ever. And you've really refined yourself you know, and you've grown as a, as a human being as well. So just anything you want to start or do, you know, just go all out, man. Really, you know, just go all out and don't focus on money and fame and things like that. Those are the, the worst thing that, you know, you're, you're getting into something for the wrong reasons. If, if that's the, the goal, I've seen people do that as well. And, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't work out well. Um, if that's your thing, like go to Hollywood, maybe try to be an actor or something like that. But um, just whatever it is that you're going after, um, if it's something you're passionate about, something you really love, you know, really, really delve into that, man. And um, follow that love, follow that passion and do it for those reasons. And a lot of the other things are going to, are going to follow behind. And, um, you know, and, Follow your six P's. Um, come up with a plan. Plan your work. Work your plan. Follow your six P's. The proper planning prevents just poor performance. So if you if you stick to that, um, and like I said, be you know very very adamant about not not giving up, moving forward, you're you're gonna succeed. You know? And simple simple as that. Some brilliant advice there. I, I know that in, in your absence, there had been some rumors surrounding Dominion Seed Co. And I think specifically some of the things that I saw posted was that there was supposedly some seeds that didn't end up with the vendors they were meant to. And others say they were sort of stolen. It's a bit unclear. And then other people had been involved. I, I know that your wife had been dragged into it at one point, And I think Skunk VA had been sort of dragged into it. Would you just be able to clarify a little bit around what happened? Because I think the, the toughest part about what happened to you was that you, you didn't have the opportunity to, to discuss any of it yourself. You know, it's all sort of secondhand knowledge. So if you could maybe clarify some of those things and just help set the record straight, that would be phenomenal. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. Because... Man, this is like, you know, there's nothing worse than, you know, you, when you can't even speak up for yourself, you know. So, um, essentially, like, what had happened was um, I had all this planned out in case shit went south. I didn't get a bond or whatever. And everything was laid out, you know. These are supposed to go to the spender, the spender. Um, money's to be done like this everybody's still you know making the route and everything the projects were already ready to go uh seeds were ready um everything should have been nice nice and smooth and then uh you know i'm losing contact with people not being able to get a hold of people and like literally none of this plan is happening whatsoever 
so you know it led to me thinking like huh like you know what what's going on here you know because if there's a problem you know like i i can fix it you know i can figure shit out even from from my position um but like i said every not everybody but some people ghosted out so i had you know just call it an employee apprentice or what what have you that did you know the like seed counting packing making the vials and everything did a great job on all that um also you know helping along with watering later on like in that that last half year before all this is going on doing some water and doing some gardening i'm relocating down south so definitely needed the definitely needed the help with that um and just kind of be the best teacher that I can be, you know, and treating them like an apprentice. Um, so they're supposed to be handling shit. Uh, they go, they go fucking ghost on me. Um, and everything is not being handled in, in the way that handled. And then like all these like, you know, rumors are like starting to come about, like people are telling me that I'm in contact with. And I'm like, well, that, that is a, uh, that's a load of horse shit. So like, <laughs> like one of the, the the biggest ones that that fucking got me was I didn't do any of the growing or any of the breeding, and I was like, "Oh the fuck up, oh hell no, hell no!" Like that one, that one was just the most fucking ridiculous shit I had heard, and especially like in a community like where people have like like you personally, like you've literally been there in person, like watching it watching this go down and uh like and they're even claiming they did all the work for grim and everything else and like i said like i mean you can you can speak up if you want you know i mean you like literally personally yeah every every day for two weeks i saw you doing the work yeah and did you, did you see anybody else doing anything no it's just me and you there yes correct though and like people could even like go to seoul and ask him and like that dude don't like me for shit and even he'll tell you, you know, like, yeah, dude was, dude was fucking doing his thing. Like you got Robbie from Nerds G- Genetic. He was my neighbor there, like where I was doing my thing for a long time. I hang out over there every single day, right? Um, I had a lot of other, you know, people that just like to come by and hang out while I'm working. I mean, there's a shit ton of work, but, you know, people can hang out and I can talk while I work and people just thought it was cool and fun. You know, they got to see me do the process. You know, James Bean's been there witnessing it uh like propane jane was right around the way she would come by and just hang out you know you know just learn stuff um uh, a few other people they're on they're on ig and everything um they, like i said they would just you know come and hang out and shoot the shit I'm a triple uh sticky lungs on ig An old friend of mine he was by there all the time the big dang Corey, he was always over there you know when he was around um just dude just so many fucking people that were just like that is a load of shit you know but a rumor is a rumor and a rumor doesn't die till it's till it's killed so another thing is like yeah they're claiming to be a stud breeder i'm like all right well like is anybody actually asking them any any questions about breeding because oh well, i bet you I bet you a dollar they don't they're not going to have the, the answer to it you know so because they they weren't they weren't ones doing the work so I was like, yeah, so obviously like this is, this is not, not good. And like, this is the source of, you know, what's going on. And like some people, um, I won't even throw his name out there. Like, even though I probably should, but I'm not, um, like buys into a lot of this. Like <laughs> another one, like, and he told me, cause like I needed to talk to him recently and he's like bought into the shit. He was like, yeah, you lied about, uh, <laughs> going to, going to prison back in the day i was like what <laughs> that's the only thing to lie about anyway but whatever so I, luckily i got like some paperwork nearby it's got like my original you know date and everything else so snap a picture i'm like all right yeah that's just 2007 you know and explains a lot you know and you know once again you know, i have old friends that used to literally talk to me you know over the phone at at this at this facility they they you know helped me out through money on my books back in the day and they all they all knew what was up. So and and the worst thing is is the person that's like you know spreading this lie. Um, 
saw me like right when I got out of prison and like was even around like with me going to the probation office to take my piss test. Like they, they know all this. So like, they're just obviously just trying to come up with fucking so much bullshit just to, you know, accomplish their own goal. So that was, I guess at the time, you know, sell the remaining bit of the stock and then they said they were going to start up a new company. And like, by all means, like you want to do your thing, like do your thing, like start your company, like good for you. Right. But all the wine and all that extra shit, like, nah, you, you didn't need to fucking do that. And then another one, he was like, oh, yeah, you're on meth. I'm like, dude, I've only seen that shit one time in my life. And I wasn't doing it. I even got in a fight with the guy like two days later on a job site because he's a fucking piece of shit. Like, I don't fucking do that. Anybody that really knows me, like, I don't do drugs. And there's even been cases of people that did do drugs. Um, and I, I straight up, I tell them, like, I can't, I can't hang around you. Like, that's just, you know, that's not good. <laughs> so, and, you know, what I say to that, um, anybody that knows me could tell you, but anybody that wants to say some shit like that, go down in your fucking pocket, pay for a fucking hair follicle test for me, you know, put you, put your money where your fucking cock holster is and fucking get that test. You can go back, I think, like seven years or more. So I've been going too, so that gives you a good, Five fucking years. So if I was on any type of drug, it'd be on there. And I'm gonna come up hot as fuck for THC. That's it. So you know I can squash out when right fucking there. And like I said, having this paperwork and shit like that to be like, nope, that's where you fucked up. Oh, you weren't here. You couldn't have done that. Boom. Here's a check stub. Boom. You know, like I got, like literally, like to dis- disprove every single fucking thing. And like I said, some of it was so fucking absurd. The people in the know, which are out there, like they obviously know, like it's bullshit because they were fucking there, you know. So, um, very, very, you know, very disheartening, you know, to to see all that, you know, especially after somebody um, that you really looked out for, you know, so much. And obviously, you know, they, you know, felt some kind of way and we're going to do what they were going to do, and they did it, and. And, you know, it's all in the past. It's whatever. Like, you know, you didn't fucking, you know, ruin me. You know, I'm going to keep doing me. I'm going to keep moving forward. But, you know, they're not going to be around for it, which is, you know, bad, bad for them. That's the worst part is like good friends that you're really trying to take care of. And then ultimately one of them's like, yeah, no fucking cash, cash the fuck out and then spread a bunch of lies. So I have somebody to help me cash out. And the worst part is like the good friend that actually like believes this shit you know, and was very adamant about, oh, no, you're lying, you're lying, you should just, you know, stop lying, get your life back together, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, like, literally, I can literally prove all this right here, and just with what I have at my at my hands length right now, like a piece of paperwork with the fucking dates on it, boom, here, when I get to the house, I got my whole fucking PSR, you can read the whole fucking thing, like, everything in detail, like, discredit the fuck out of it, but why in the fuck are you fucking going to believe some wild ass crazy shit like that from somebody you don't even really know, right? Over, over your friend of some, some years, right? And that's what is more mind blowing, you know, and hurtful, I guess, than anything. But yeah, like, you know, I could definitely, definitely squash out, you know, any, any of that shit. So it's just, like I said, it's just, you know, like you were saying, it's just, you, you, you're one of the people that's actually been there, you know, seeing this. So it comes off as just pretty, pretty absurd anyway, you know? Yeah. Look, you hit all the questions I was going to follow up with before I even had a chance. So thank you for painting, you know, a clearer picture. And I think that you've always got to take stories you hear with a grain of salt when you don't have the ability to hear all perspectives. And I think that must have been a really frustrating aspect for you not being able to reply throughout this whole process. Yeah. And like, you know, that's what they count on. Well, I was just saying, that's what people like that count on. It's like, you always hear the saying is like, people are going to kick you when you're down. And furthermore, like being down is like, you're muffled, you're silenced, like you're physically actually restrained. Like you can't do a thing. And then when people see things and then they come out with it and like, Hey, something sucked up, you know, then you got people bickering and fighting amongst each other. Um, which is, you know, fucked up. And then, cause one side's going to pick one or the other and it, and it gets fucked up. 
And then unfortunately, you know, you get other people drawn into the middle and then they get really pissed and frustrated with the whole thing. And it's just, it's just a whole cancerous thing and it grows and grows. And if you're not able to like really get out there and stop it, um, it just gets worse until, you know, time will iron everything out without you even having to, you know, step forward. And obviously like I've looked back and everything and, you know, like a lot of good people out there that knew the shit was going on. They're screenshotting, they're recording, they're doing all this stuff. So like, you know, I was well informed, like right when I, right when I got back and put it all together, but, um, you know, it, it irons itself out really, especially when you got stuff that's just so absurd. It, it just comes off weird. And it's like, obviously it's like, yeah, it's obviously a, obviously a lie. So, um, you know, but now being able to actually deal with it and talk with it, um, it wasn't really that widespread or that big of a deal for real. Um, but still just the fact that somebody that close was trying some shit like that, that's what bothered me. But like, if anybody did hear anything, like, yeah, it's just, I mean, most everybody anyways, like, yeah, that's, that's a load of shit. So that's, that's cool too. Good to know, you know, you got people in your corner that know that you're, you know, a solid dude and that you're doing what you're saying. I mean, it's just, you know, the good thing, if you live a good, good life and you, you know, do that, you don't really have nothing to worry about when people do, you know, talk out the side of their neck. And, um, yeah, now that I'm back and, able to kind of iron that out and be like yeah you know straight up bro you got you got hoodwinked man and here it is here it is here it is and then by the end of it man like yeah now i kind of i kind of see what you're saying so i just wanted to you know get it get it very apparent to them you know just so they know and then you know that that should that should kill that right where it fucking lies you know yeah look hopefully that can help set the record straight for anyone who maybe had heard some of the incorrect rumors circulating around. But I think, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, there was what I thought at least was some good things that sort of came out regarding like community banding together in that there was at least what I know of two breeders who were very keen to try to help you out financially and uh, good old Odie of Heroes of the Farms as well as um, Soulfire Genetics both came to the table and wanted to offer some strains to help raise some funds for you. Was this something you had any idea was happening or was it sort of a pleasant surprise when you found out? Just, I won't even say pleasant surprise, like just static. Um, just blown away um, by all the people that came to the bat for me. And like I had friends telling me, they're like, you're getting hit up from people all over the world. These people are just like, you know, whatever, whatever they can do, whatever help that you need. Because, and then they all had a story. Oh, uh, there's this one time this dude took two hours to, you know, on a DM to teach me a new, a new uh, approach. And then I gave him an address and I sent him, you know, a, a whole lot, the whole fucking menu just on the house. You know, or somebody that was down and out and I donated to their fundraiser or wildfire fundraisers are, are just, you know, not, I don't, I don't do things like that because I'm thinking like, Oh, well, in the end, you know, I might get something. I do it just to do it. You know what I mean? And I guess I had done so much of it, you know, I, it didn't really cross my mind. It's just the right thing to do. And then when they're, you know, I'm hearing back from them, I'm like, wow. Yeah, I guess, I guess I was getting, I was getting out there, you know? And, um, and all these people just came out the woodwork came to bat for me. And I can't, I can't thank them enough. You know, the only thing I can say is, you know, thank you. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Um, y'all helped me make it through like seemingly like the impossible. And, um, only thing I can say is, you know, I promise to you know, do a, do some more good in this world and, um, do a good job. And I won't, uh, I won't uh, need those services anymore. I'm, I will not be going back to the old pen ever again. So, um, you know, thank you. Thank you all for, for everything that you've done, from kind words to donations to just anything and everything. It's truly, you know, thank you. And I love you all. Yeah, what a, what a brilliant sentiment there. I guess it uh, makes me curious to know 
is there any chance we may see any collaborations in the future now that you've you know you got i mean you you already knew before people liked you but now you really know that for sure you know is there any chance you want to maybe do collabs or you're more just thinking you know i got to get myself going first nah man gotta you know put others before yourself uh especially on stuff like that so yeah i'm working uh been working basically the, the day after i got out i've already done uh on it like stink on shit man so yeah y'all can definitely look forward to a, a whole lot of that well you know what i was a little bit of a selfish segue on my part because you know the the hoodoo it's been such a such a popular strain really cool collab between you and skunk va are there any sort of breeders who since getting out you're interested in or more importantly since you know you've gotten back out are there any i was thinking about it, are there any strains that have caught your eye as in like oh that wasn't really a thing when i went away and I, and I was thinking about it and i was like i don't know if anything major has hit the scene since you left it hasn't it hasn't the only things that i've seen that really really you know like caught my eye or attention that i'm like oh yeah yeah i'm gonna need to get on that it's all work from you know like my buddies um I don't know if I've only said his real name. It's probably no big deal now, but uh, Bob Hemphill, um, for sure. He's been doing some great shit. And it's like my type of style too, so I'm like, yeah, I need to, need to, need to peep some of that. Um, and my buddy, AK Brain, for sure. Like He's been doing some really cool shit and all his uh, his crew of dudes. Um, do a lot of work with like Williams Wonder and F5 of that and some NL, NL work and stuff like that that I'm yeah, I'm I'm all about that, you know. So uh, that's 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 got me got me actually pretty pretty excited. Probably more excited than I should be, but pretty stoked for both those dudes anyway. I love them guys, but uh, yeah, they they got my interest peak, you know. A lot of the stuff, some of the stuff Skunk VA come out with is pretty pretty rad looking too. So, but yeah, not not really a lot. So really a lot's changed. A lot of dessert stuff and. Kind of the same things that were hitting when I was away, you know. They're, they're still doing doing their thing. Yeah, that was sort of the vibe I got. But you know what? Brilliant. You you mentioned both those two breeders because I was going to ask you questions. I was going to say, you know, have you seen Bob Hemphill's Park Back Cross? It's looking pretty cool. Hell yeah, I've seen that fucking puck, uh, puck Lebanese too today. Oh my god, oh, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah that that plant is a, a special plant for sure i was curious to know though uh, this is actually a, a fan submitted question and they've, they've got a good memory they basically said that they remembered uh some time ago you had mentioned that you'd lost your durban tie high flyer and they were wondering the cut you had was that different to the one that ak bean brains and skunk va use or is it the same one and you just like hadn't got it back off them I'm not sure about AK Bean Brains one. I would think so, but I'm not 100% sure. But I gave the uh, the high flyer to uh, VA, so I know that's that's the right one. And uh, I got another buddy that's got it got it backed up for me. Um, my buddy uh, Savage Gardens up in uh, up in Portland. He even did a little hybrid using it called the Thai Iced Tea. It's like super super popular up there right now that struck my eye too some fucking gnarly shit yeah he's got some cool b -Wiz hybrids he's made I, I i still follow his stuff ever since meeting him at emerald cup that year he does nice stuff i guess what i'm interested in asking is do you have any reservations about the authenticity of the durban tie high flyer because i remember when i spoke to um bodhi he actually said to me that he, he wasn't speaking for certain or anything, but he said that over the years there had been people who had come out of the woodworks with Durban Tire High Flyer clones and often he was skeptical of the authenticity and he sort of said that he suspected it was maybe like a, a Durban Tire leaning um, hybrid of the Durban Tire C99 because that was sort of a more recent release, more accessible have you ever thought maybe that's the case and again this isn't anyone speaking about the specific clone in question it's just a general sort of question yeah so i would say like well as far as like that exact thing before 
I made that DTC 99, like the, the re-release, you know, using a, just a regular Durbin. Uh, we had that, that cutting like far beyond that point. So it wouldn't be for that unless it was the older DTC 99 from what, 2001, I think, you know, when they, when they did that, something like that. Um, I highly doubt it because that, that would be a, it's a rare gem on its own. And it would probably be um, called and named as such. So I kind of, kind of doubt that. Um, also, when Soul was, you know, smoking it, you know, when I when I had gotten it, um, he was like, "Yeah, that's that's it." You know, that's that's what he remembered um, as well. And I was like, "Yeah, it's pretty pretty spot on to me." And just kind of the way it grows and kind of a little different influences from just a straight Durban. So, but. The thing is, at the end of the day, and I mean, this could be safe for him or anybody that gets clones from somewhere. Like, do you really know, right? Do you, do you really know what went on in Holland? Do you really know that their tie was authentic? Do you really know this? Do you really know that? And that's that's a that's a great thing to say because there is a lot of uncertainty in what what is, what isn't. Um, and I've you know <laughs> I won't I won't say it, but there's been a lot of breeders to go on and get something and breathe the fuck out of it. And then years later, you know, after we've been told year after year, be like, yeah, well, that wasn't really this. I guess it turns out it was, you know, this, right. So, you know, you gotta, gotta be, be weary for sure. You know, and you, you know, always try to stick to, you know, authentic, authentic sources and everything. But sometimes people's authentic sources turn out to be, uh, be all fucked up. <laughs> then it comes out later, you know, and I've seen a, uh, you know, I won't put the name out there, but, you know, um, I've seen it happen, happen to you guys, man. So, um, you know, we just got to do our best and, um, you know, just take, uh, take with what we got. And, um, you know, if everything points to, yeah, this is legit and cool. And you know you can uh, you can move forward. That's why I just try to deal with you know straight up people and people I really know. And you know it makes sense. You know especially if they got a you know this is how it went. Now this where I got it. Da 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 da. You know um, that's definitely a, a good thing because there's so many people out there that have this or that. And it's just so many so many red flags. Like you know you're talking about that that dude earlier. Like yeah fucking old cornbread mafia roadkill skunk clone uh right here one week old i'm gonna change the game and you're looking at this picture and it's this fucking plant that has got a weedens on it it was it was literally just a seedling and he's talking like this 30 year old plant <laughs> he's taking pictures of them and i was like you can literally see the cotta weedens on the uh on the picture like <laughs> you fucking get me so you know you, you got a lot of a lot of bullshit people out there too so you know, it's definitely it's definitely a tricky, tricky situation a lot of times. But um, yeah. So as as best as I can say, yeah, yeah, it's a it's you know it's a legit one. No, I feel you for sure, and uh, I'm definitely gonna go back in post production and like audio effect his name out. <laughs> which one? Which one was it? What, what did I say? Oh, we'll we'll, we'll take off. Uh, Oh, 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 fuck that motherfucker. (laughs) You know, so it's it's sort of interesting that you mention many of those things uh, that, you know, talking about when you get clones, you know, do you really know what they are? Things like that sort of vibe. And I guess it, it segues well into the next question, which was that although it was around before you went away, I think it's really come to the climax in the past 12 months. But the, the hop latent viroid is what I've been calling recently. It's it's the COVID of the cannabis world. You know, it's it's really really spreading around do you have any concerns around your plants having it and would you ever look into any sort of like tissue culturing to try to get rid of it if so yeah i would definitely want to test everything um first and foremost and i really would like to uh just tissue culture the whole the whole collection one for backup purposes but two if anything's gone astray since i've been gone it would nice It'd be nice just to start clean, 
spread from scratch, you know, plus, you know, the added vigor and all that stuff that, that goes on as well. You know, that would be, uh, I feel like a good, good way to start. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. And I mean, I guess it, it's probably too early for you to really give definitive answers, but are you going to be much more apprehensive and skeptical taking in clones moving forward? Oh, absolutely. I was always sketchy as shit, but I was a real sketchy dude anyhow, you know? So, um, yeah, man, you, you, that's the number one thing where people thought up is they just take in whatever. They don't quarantine and stuff. But, uh, hey, I guess now that COVID's been going on, everybody's doing quarantines on themselves, you know? It's like, do the same with those plants, you know? Keep them out, out of the population and keep them locked down. And, you know, keep a uh, tight eye on them. Don't just you know, just throw it up into the mix and ruin your shit, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know you've spoken about it on the past, so if you if you feel like there isn't anything really more to add, I certainly understand. But we had a lot of people ask about if you have any new tips or trips for sort of your IPM, or is it still largely sort of what you used to do? Yeah, it's, it's generally like the same as, you know, kind of what always was anyway. And just going right back to what we just said, um, just just the basics are going to keep you away from even having to, to really get into any problem and fix them. So, you know, don't take in strange shit. Don't let just dirty ass people up in your grow. If you can help it, don't let anybody in your grow. Um, just the, the basic keep it simple um, process, you know, just be clean. Uh, don't let the animals run around the yard that come in. Um, so many things that just are going to make your life a lot easier. Keep your finger getting your pee on. Broad mites, rusted mites, um, spider mites, uh, and pythium, and a lot of other, the more, the more common things that people are dealing with. It just all starts with good, clean practices, and it's not taking anything uh, that you don't know about, especially without like a proper plan. You know? So just Keep it basic and follow these basic principles and you'll find that you don't have to, uh, you don't really have to deal with a whole lot other than concentrating on this growing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's really it. You got to resist the urge to bring in the, uh, the new silver gelato runts and, and keep the, keep the haram safe. So a question that was both submitted by fans and me personally, I was interested to hear about. Unfortunately, um, you ended up going away sort of not too long after one of the releases from Dominion. And so I guess people didn't really find out as much about the figure four crosses as maybe they were hoping. And so I was wondering, could you give us any sort of description slash details of the figure four and what you were hoping to bring to the table with that mail. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was a shame because I didn't really get to speak on it. Everything was tested and ready and packed up and went out, but it was literally right at the same time. I'm like, oh, fuck, I gotta go deal with this right quick. And, you know, they lied about that, that bond. Of course they did, you know, <laughs> so... um I didn't get that chance to come back out and talk more in depth about it. But you, you actually, if I'm not mistaken, got to witness at least one of the steps um, that was in, in making the mail. So, do you remember the ass man? Airborne yeah. Skelly Stone. Yep. So, that was, that was the, the boy that ended up getting developed and then hitting the triangle. And the whole... The whole process of selecting that final male out of that hive was to hit OG type plants, chem type plants, fix structure, and still still not take too much away from what was there originally and, and build. Like, have you did you get to see any like the savage headbands? I don't know if I saw them, but I saw the the ass man and the pollination from it. Yeah, yeah. Big beefy, big beefy motherfuckers. So I really like the main things I wanted to really get into outside of like you know the of course the the funk man the terpenes and the and the potency and all that good stuff. I wanted to take away from a lot of that that like, internodal spacing, and I wanted to make the branching a lot stronger too. So that was that was the 
the main the main goal with that and just and just live them up man just reinvigorate them and get some shit that was coming out extra 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 stank but also extra extra strong higher yielding and everything too yeah that's that's a brilliant answer and uh we had another listener who was wondering you know they say look i I see duke's work with a variety of different og cushions over the years and i was just wondering what do you prefer personally and what do you think gk all day yo (laughs) (laughs) i knew it i knew it i was like writing that question and i they they'd been like does he like headband ghost triangle and i was like it's just triangle yeah tk and then as far as like Cause like I never considered like headband being an OG, you know. But you know, if he did, then yeah, headband and CK, of course. Yeah, nice. And out of a personal curiosity, I remember a while back you you toyed around with the Blissful Wizard just as a like a freebie slash a little you know muck around sort of project. Is that the cutting of cookies that you think is the one you would most breed with if you were going to, or it's not necessarily your favorite cut of cookies? Um, it has really killer weed. I ain't going to lie. That is some killer weed. Unfortunately, it veges slower than blood. Um, and like yield wise, you know, it's like, yeah. But, and, it, and like I said, cookies has never really been my thing. And like when I did that, I just, uh, you know, Savage, you know, he, he was the one that wanted me to do it. I was just making some memes for him. And he's like, yeah, dude, so it's cool or whatever. And, you know, we made some for him. And he's like, yeah, just give a few away just to, you know, just to be a cool guy. So, yeah, it was just a, just a thing, man. <laughs> Yeah, nice. We had uh, a customer who had grown out the Funky Town freebie, and they were like, I love it. I just would love to know, what are the genetics? (laughs) Never. (laughs) I thought you might do that. Yeah, man. If you go into the genetics, then people start trying to get it, and it's just better just leaving leaving that part out and just stay, just enjoy it, you know? There's something that could have been sold for a high dollar. And that was the whole point, just give it away. And uh, just let people enjoy it. Yeah, okay. Can I can I take one stab at one of the parents? Go for it. I don't know why. I have no idea why. But for some reason, I just always remembered you did that urban slice, like slice and urban slice. And for some reason, I just, my heart's telling me maybe that's, maybe that's in it somewhere. No. No, neither, neither one of the, neither one of the parents there, and all the, see, all the urban slices were like, I had the the tequila finos that were like tequila, like I smelled straight up like fucking tequila. Man. I even made rosin smell like you had a bottle of tequila open, and then the other ones were just like some fucking really insane orange. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. I I know it's like just. Most of them were better versions of Tangy. I think I only tried one or two sliced Finos, but they were they were great, Be- beautiful stuff. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And uh, you know that, that was a that was a real good one. That was one of the one of the projects that got left on hold. You know that I have to have to pick up when I get out. So I was like, yeah, let me put some some Dominion type orange out into the world. So yeah. Hey, before it leaves my mind, you know, you you mentioned Ass Man a while ago. Will we ever see that pop up in another form, or it would just be through the Figure Four? Um, through the Figure Four, but we did something super cool, and I did it. <laughs> I did it for Bean Brains because he hooked me up with that MTF, you know, just to grow out and shit. Yeah, and I just thought it'd be a cool thing. It's like, fuck it, that Ass Man would go really, really, really good on that. And uh, so I hit it, and I just sent him a huge, huge bag of seed. And uh, I was like, hey, what do you want me to do with them? I was like, do whatever, man. Grow them, breed them, you know, uh, sell them, do, breed them, then sell them, whatever you want. This is just my way of saying thank you for, you know, passing something really special and old to me to, you know, grow and enjoy. And, um, and he did that. So I guess, um, I guess probably by the time this comes out, it'll probably have already already have happened he uh being the good dude that he is is like bagging him up 
sending them to James Bean, and we're gonna we're gonna put them put them out there, you know, to to hook you up. I was like, man, you're too much, man. <laughs> That's awesome stuff. Yeah, the MTF cross with the ass, man. Fucking Christmas tree, fucking buds, some like orange citrusy crazy shit going on, and just put your dick in the dirt type potency on the on the heavy narcotic end. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, as you it as you st- Thunderhole. <laughs> <laughs> as you started saying that, I was like, Oh, I forgot to mention AK Bean Brains earlier because he, he had mentioned to me that he was gonna do that and I was like, Oh, he, he donated some strands as well. Um Yeah. Man. That's cool. That's that's really cool to hear. I, I dig that a lot. Now you got me thinking, I think there was someone else anyway. Who knows? Probably not important. But um, yeah, <laughs> kudos to AK Bean Brains, a, a really lovely yeah. guy who's always been very, very lovely and helpful. I mean, now let's go back to what we were talking about just a moment ago. And we were sort of in the realms of skunk and, you know, the slice has got that skunk in it, stuff like that. A lot of people are wondering, do you still have, you know, original skunk seeds available to you or are you working with the hybrids now? Um, I still have uh, seeds from the last time I did a filial on them. Um, I'd done so much work, you know, hybridizing them and, and, and working them in different ways, seeing what's happening, what's not happening. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back to the starting point unless it's a whole, a whole another, another project that I, that I found myself into. Um, and I don't, I don't really have much of that on my, on my mind at, at the moment, you know. So um, I would use something I've hybridized it in to, to go forward in a in a project if if I was going to go go that direction, you know. Um, now, like with the slice, for instance, you know, it's like uh, what <laughs> was that? So like Cali O, it was just a weird stump number one, you know, type. So that's what like my curiosity fell with. That. I was like, if I hit it with more skunk one, like what what happened, you know? And it was it was pretty pretty fucking awesome. So. Yeah, I I agree. And you've you've sort of got me interested now. What are your thoughts on the reincarnated version of Super Sativa Seed Club that's popped its head out? I don't know if you've paid much attention to it or even got a particular opinion on it, but I'd be curious to know. Yeah, it went. It happened right after, or I mean, excuse me, right before I went in. And it had happened a couple times prior to that. And then people found out it was just like a fake or a scam. Um, so I heard it and then I, and then, I, then I was gone. So I never, I never got to really look back into it. And it's kind of just kind of like you just reminded me about that. So I have to, I have to look at it like it's legit, right? Yeah. Well, look, I mean... I don't know. It's it's hard to say, but I, I guess the the if I sort of wanted to give you the dot points and have you reflect on those, I would say number one, there's no strain they're currently selling now that was one of the former ones. What they're right. selling now are new strains, and there's only one or two that I can see that are of older lineage. So I guess with those dot points in mind, I'm sort of a little bit skeptical, and and likewise, it hasn't. <laughs> made any waves since releasing those strains i would uh i would uh i could see where that would happen <laughs> um like the thing that i saw like before i went out which kind of was just like why i just kind of didn't really think about it much was like when i saw it and somebody linked me to it they had like a like a cookie hybrid and like you said there was nothing at all from from that and i was like yeah yeah uh, all right so um so yeah i mean that that's that'd be that'd be my thoughts you know it's a little little odd i mean fuck you got like i said back to you know, it's the ak bean brains probably like, oh, you've been talking about me but uh i mean just going back to home and some other other folks that he hangs around like dude even they got old stock that they're working with and bringing back like how are you the the, the main the main company and you're you know, so that would, you know, because like that's what people would, would ideally want. I mean, not to say they wouldn't want anything new, but, you know, you would like to think you'd see some of the old or at least some of the old hybridized, some of the new or, you know, some all new creation, something, you know, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. 
I think I'm I'm probably good on that. Act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I was surprised when I saw the cookie hybrids and stuff, but I was like, oh well. But you know, the other thing I was thinking about is all of the notable SSC, uh, sorry, SSSC strains were ones that we're pretty confident like they weren't breeding in Amsterdam like you know like the the skunk comes from Virginia and Williams Wonder from Oregon and so it's like they weren't the breeders anyway right and that that was the thing is like they were like a a distribution company and like even like you know Saul worked for him uh for a while as like one of the distributors you know like he would <coughs> mail you know mail the packs out and everything um but all the, the the company was like it was like a collection of breeders from all over the place that all put their put their works under under that line like a, a, like a record label or something, and that's what made them really awesome. Is what I felt is like because you got such diversity and so many different people styles tastes that made that awesome, you know. So um, yeah, like that, that that was a cool cool thing. So yeah, it's like. It, so it's not surprising, you know. Um, a lot of those guys probably like, nah, I'm, I think I'm good. I'm, I'll just hold on to my shit, or they're just not giving a fuck anymore. Or it's just not what they do. You know, it was a long time ago. Yeah, certainly. I mean, sort of in that same vein, I'm not sure if you've seen, but Todd McCormick is selling what looks to realistically be like real deal northern lights and including the predecessors because he's been able to strike up a relationship with the guy who seems quite legitimately verified as um, yeah well i know i know uh, greg yeah and so i guess i'm interested to know does that sort of pique your curiosity at all given there does seem to be some reasonable proof that it could be legit or not so much absolutely you know? yeah, yeah yeah like because especially like when it's you know like a guy, I don't know him like you know, personally or anything, but you know he's, he's a stand-up dude, has a good reputation of being a stand-up dude, and stand-up people deal with the guy like you know that you know his, his reputation precedes him, you know. So there's that, um, you know. And L. Greg, you know, like that is, that's that's legit, right? So that 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 tells me like you know, hey, for me like that's a go for sure. You know, I, I would get it. I would grow it. Absolutely. Yeah, nice. Okay, I guess I was just curious, like, particularly because he's also selling, like, skunk. And I was like, ooh, I wonder if that had caught your eye either. Well, I haven't, I haven't got really. It's been so busy just answering all the names. I'm still answering once from almost two weeks ago. Again, um, so, yeah, just catching up with people and working on, like, some of the new projects, like the soil wire and the new line and other, other little things. Um, it's been taking up a lot of time, plus doing the whole song and dance of here. So, um, yeah, man, I, I'll definitely, definitely have to take a look at it all, man. Yeah, look, I, I, you know what, I, I sort of feel bad as a, as I hear you say that because I, I understand where you're coming from. You're probably, probably still figuring out what weighs up and down. <laughs> you don't have time to do that sort of stuff. <laughs> One of the more lighthearted questions we got was, uh, how much did you miss barbecue? A lot. God, so much. Like just all food, food, just human food in general, like is is greatly, greatly missed. You know. So, uh, yeah, just food in general, man, but yeah, barbecue especially, please. That's, that's a, definitely a big one on the list. <laughs> Very barbecue deficient in my system now. <laughs> so, we had another person who was wondering, they sort of were hoping to get some clarification on what exactly skunk you were using. And I think that maybe what they're referring to is like maybe sometimes it said basic skunk, sometimes it said skunk. And are they the same thing? Because I think if you look online, something says basic skunk is like NL5 skunk or something. But yeah, just hoping to get some clarification around like what was it that you were toying with exactly? Yeah, so like if if it was, you know, skunk one, it was, you know, noted as noted as skunk one, and it's just old DVC club Scott the stock. They got filial, uh, filially inbred um, over the course of course of years, just maintaining it or whatever. Um, 
And then the basic side, yeah, is like an NL skunk, NL skunk, like a Shiva skunk, uh, you know, NL, you know, a Shiva skunk is NL skunk. So that was a, that was a hybrid of totally, totally different, different thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. More indica influence, you know, uh, and more, a little bit heavier on the, uh, on the nar- narcotic, you know, side of things. Yeah. Look, in that same vein, we'd received about three questions from people who were just curious about specifically one of the parents in the local H, the cuttlefish hash plant. They were just wondering if you could give us any information on it. There's Even I myself looked around, very little info about it online. Oh, yeah. It wasn't. And like when we had this back in the days before the big, you know, legal weed world and all that really blown up. And it was kind of a tight tight little cut being held, you know, back then. Um, really, really, really strong shit. Uh, skunky nose on it. Um, nice fat, fat fucking buds. Strong branch like it. You know, it's it was hard, hard to beat. Um, and unfortunately, like, you know, that's, that's not in my, not in my possession anymore. You know, so that, you know, the closest thing I have to me relation is just the one thing that it's in and i don't i don't know anybody that's got any more the one dude that hooked it up you know he's 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 dead now so um yeah i really couldn't tell you i'd I'd be surprised to ever ever see it again but who knows be cool somebody's holding on to it out there yeah maybe but i mean like the local h it, it feels like that embodies some of the characteristics i'd have to imagine right Oh yeah, absolutely. It came out a lot, a lot on the smell and the effect, you know. Um, and then having that that sour diesel in the mix too, and just you know, really, really brought all these good points together. And like you, you smoke local and, and it's pure, you know what I mean. So uh, you kind of know what I'm what I'm talking about. Some funky ass weed. Oh yeah, and and even the local hybrids I've tried are all killer, like consistently. Yeah. Yeah, it was a definitely a definitely a, just it was a good breeder too, and just just non finicky plant grows great. great. It's got about everything that you want in it, you know. So it's like a no brainer to uh, you know toy around with it a little bit and say, you know, well, let's see what happens, you know. And then the hybrid, God, yeah, it's still winner. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So someone had a question about the shine apple, and it's interesting because I'd sort of noticed some of these things they raise myself, but they say, what percentage approximately of the shine apple phenos have like that leaf mutation where it's like just, you know, one or a couple of leaves? And specifically the reason why they were asking is because the, this person likes, you know, those sort of mutant plants. And, and we're just wondering what's their chances, how many packs would they need to buy to be sort of reasonably certain they might come across one? <laughs> you found a freak in every pack, man. Uh, that was definitely a freaky one. Oh, really? It was. It was that sort of uh, high. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. Like it. Like even in my testing phase, like when they're in veg, I was like, "Oh shit, what do we got going on here?" I was like, oh, "It's going to be really good or really bad." So let's uh, let's see what goes goes down here, you know. And uh, yeah, man, came out came out killer but yeah definitely you see a lot of freaks, freaks in the mix. and how do you approach that commercially as a breeder where you're like look this killer seed line but there's some people who just might not like they might just think oh it's a run i gotta cull it and like they and you know what i mean they're sort of preemptively doing things without realizing do you have to consider that or it's just irrelevant to you mm, i mean what you know whatever people who are gonna do uh, and ultimately, ultimately, they're going to do uh, if they see freaks or, or runs or anything and they, they decide to call it. It's like, that's generally a, a, always been a bad move. Like, most of the best plants I've ever grown were a little bit slower, um, a little bit freakish, you know. And it's just, I always figured, like, you know, ones that were a little slower is like they were taking their energy, it's going to go somewhere got that energy in the plant that's going to be producing something and obviously it's not biomass and fast vegging so uh, i'm thinking uh it's going to be later on in flower and uh typically yeah it's always super 
off the chart frosty and stinky or something, you know, like that energy went somewhere just, you know, like that, like talking about the whiz early, like this shit frosty as fuck, stinking as we really kill her. The, the slowest vegging thing I think I've ever grown. <laughs> and definitely a mutant, like it was a weird looking thing. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I was wondering, have you ever seen any other cuttings where, like, when you do a certain combination, you equally get these weird mutants? Yeah. Um, I, I used to always notice uh, when I was growing a lot of bogs work, I would get a lot of petiole buds, you know, like little, little weird things like that. Um there were certain other things I've grown, like where I get like the flat, the flat stem, you know, that's like, you know, not round, it's flat, um, weird leaf mutation and shit like that. You know, I've, I've always kind of encountered it fairly, fairly regularly, you know? Um, and even like when you start growing out larger, larger numbers and shit, yeah, you'll, you'll see a lot of little odd, odd little things, you know? Mm, yeah. That's really interesting interesting you'll have to make like your own duck's foot out of it yeah <laughs> long term long term while we're on the topic of cultivation i want to quickly get this one out there earlier on you mentioned with the purple dahlia that um you know you put the warning on the pack saying you know this can can harm and i was reading about it and you're sort of saying you know if you feed humic acid with these g13 hash plant hybrids like it can just sometimes happen and I guess the question yeah, is, doesn't like it, you know? yeah, like how long did it take you to figure that out? That seems like it would have taken me like a lifetime to be like, it's the humic. <laughs> no, not, not long, man. Um, so, you know, when, when testing, you know, as you know, like, you know, I would, I would try to put things through the ringer, like purpose, go on purpose, you know? And there were other things that I would, I would do where I'm like, not feeding at all, you know, just plain water, just to see what, like, are you still going to get the results of just straight up water? Um, and when, when doing that, the ones that were getting a feed with the, uh, with the humic and everything, certain ones would pop up like, Hey, what, what are you, what are you doing there? You know? And, you know, one with the, one with the plain, plain water wasn't, you know, so I'm like, all right, it's like, it's a feeding thing. So let me uh, let me back off on on a lot of things, you know. And I think I just went just straight up dragonfly, got flowers, and then I think I just made like a back one or two with some earthworm castings, and then it didn't happen. So I'm like, all right. So I doubt it's just aloe water or you know anything else that that might have might have been hit with it. And I was like, what well, about the humic? So then I reintroduced humic and, and boom, then it happened again. So take it away, nothing, give it to it, boom. And not every single pheno, you know, but certain ones, it, it happened like that. When you do, it does, and when you don't, it don't. So that told me, like, hey, you know, you know, humic's, uh, humic's doing it right here. And I'm just guessing with the, the, the more uptake of uh, phosphorus at that time, it just it didn't like that, you know, it just wasn't wasn't big enough interesting yeah i mean that's actually it makes sense like you're able to sort of systematically figure it out like that i i like that a lot yeah because you know i don't feed much you know it's pretty pretty simple pretty simple approach so it's not a whole whole lot of things to really diagnose you know yeah yeah no that that actually simplifies it quite a bit well we've just got a few fan submitted questions before we get into the final ones i kind of like that it's a new thing man that you're doing Fans submitted questions. Yeah. You know? we didn't have that before. Let him in a bit. We've got one from our buddy True Cannibalis, and he says, "What's your favorite chem dog cutting? And what's if you had to give just one definitive answer? What strain do you think was the bud that the first chem seeds came from?" <laughs> oh, cannibalis! Good, good question. Kudos. So. Yeah, that second one threw me off because I don't know what I'm going to say, but um, what was the first question? I'm What's sorry, your favorite Kim Cut? Oh, Kim Cut, that's right. Uh, 91, 91, hands down. Um, that was, uh, that one's, I think, you know, to me, I think it's the, that's the best one. Here, here. Mm -hmm. 
So on the Kim, where do I think it came from as far as like just the mom or both parents? If if you yeah, um, just the female. What was the actual bud that the seed came out of? Uh, I'm gonna put my dollar on Skelly Hash Point. Good answer. Good answer. And so uh, the next question: uh, What's your overall all-time favorite strain? Oh, a fucked up question. You're a monster. <laughs> um, that's so impossible. You know, that is such an impossible question because it depends on you know the time of day and everything else. Oh man, I can't even answer that. Man, that, that's just that's hard. One of all right. How about I, I make it a bit easier for you? One of the final questions we normally ask is if I'm going to drop you off on an island and you can take three strains with you for the rest of your life, they can either be clones or you can just take a pack of the seeds. What are you going to take? Okay. <sighs> Fuck. You're a real bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to say Local H, Screaming Eagle, and 91. Nice. You got you got a lot of uh, different bases. Or maybe even Hoodoo. Yeah, like, but yeah, that, that, that would, I think that would be good to go there. That's good. And would you take just your clones or would you take a pack of seeds of each? If I was taking uh, Hoodoo, definitely a pack. Screaming Eagle, I would take a pack of seeds. Just because you're on a desert island, like, you know, what else you got to do? You got something to do, right? Um, and yeah, then if it was like 91 and local, it would just be the, be the yeah. plane. Yeah, I feel you. Okay, so the next one. This is an interesting one that I've sort of been wondering a bit myself. Do you have any idea what's causing more and more weed to have those tiny little premature seeds in the calyxes? Yeah, so me and my, my boy Pig Farmer, um, we had this talk back in like, it was like 2016 even. And we call them like micro beans, you know. Um I, I I just really went with because it wasn't every genetic, you know what I mean. There's a certain thing, and we we were really you know Leanne, like it's it's a feeding a feeding thing. Are we are we pushing too hard? You know what I mean. Is, is that what it is, or is it the actual thing that we are feeding? You know. So we got the got to thinking about that, and what I came to was like, look. You grow your clone your way on the regimen that you're doing, and he was on like a very strict regimen. You know, he's he's a he was a real producer. Like that dude, my God, that dude pumped some fucking butt out, and I'm mean, of the highest highest quality. You know, so um, I take the same stuff, and I'm growing it, growing it on my on my own, doing it totally on my way. And when I was doing it, I wasn't I wasn't getting those. And he still was. Um, same type of lighting, right? The same same environmental. So we could we could scratch scratch that part. Um, but it, it's it was something to do with the, the nutrient. And I, I guess I feel like if it's not a very particular ingredient in a nutrient that was in their line that wasn't you know something I was doing, or it just came from just pushing too hard. Because the weird thing was, you wouldn't see any bananas. You didn't see any herm. But yet these little bastards would, would pop up from something somewhere, you know? So, and like I said, they never developed from tiny little micro beans. So that one, still to this day, that one would kind of elude me. But it, it's something something to do with either an ingredient that, you know, certain people have in a regimen that they're feeding um, or pushing hard. So if you're if you're that person... And you know you're not pushing hard. Um, look, look at look at what you are feeding, and then just try to start pulling things out, you know, one at a time, until you until you figure it. Because if you figure it out, then you save a lot of people a whole lot of trouble, you know. Yeah, I I hadn't actually thought of that, but that's that's a pretty reasonable explanation, isn't it? Um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, another question we got which is actually something I would love to know the answer to is what is your preferred way to collect pollen ideally to sort of store so storing pollen is kind of kind of tricky um, 
long term, I guess. You know, like when I think storing, I'm thinking like you're putting it away for for a later date and time. Um, the main key to it is when you're sifting it out, like you really got to sift that shit. There cannot be any any plant material at all. Um, preferably in a low humidity environment, you know, that would be a bonus because the your main enemy is going to be moisture at the end of the day. So that's going to sterilize it. So make sure that you got no plant material in it um, because, of course, that plant material is going to have moisture in it and you're, you're fucked. And then uh, keep it away from moisture. And when you're putting it away, um, you know, make sure that it's not not going to incur any any moisture there either so very well sealed up to where uh you're not rapidly changing temperature because one thing i noticed with the bite put some away did everything perfect brings it right out of the freezer sets it down on the table and he's just got it got it in this little rubber made type thing he cuts out the, the food saver bag it sits there and, hey what happens when you get real cold coming into a warm warm area you get condensation and he fucking kills it all. <laughs> so don't don't do that. So um, my little tip of the day, and huh, man, that's, that's cool. I just realized it'd be a play on words. Tip of the day, Q-tip. So here's your Q-tip of the day. Um, collect pollen on Q-tips, like, and this is like you know for the small batch, like you're just making shit at home just to see what's up. Not for making a, a fuck ton of seed, of course. Yeah. But <clears throat> just taking it <clears throat> and getting two Q tips and getting them all nice and covered in pollen and put them in bags, seal them up, and then put them away for, for a later time. And I could take those out and uh, pollinate, you know, just single buds, you know, to get, you know, 50 seeds. So, you know, so you can, you can do that for the hobbyist. Um, for the guys who are making uh, shit tons of seed, well, and y'all are big boys, y'all y'all can figure it out. <laughs> good answer, good answer. I tried to do it in the past myself with flour, and that that is not a good method. I don't like it either, man. I'm like, I don't like to add anything to it. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think the flour like sterilizes it and is maybe even hydroscopic in itself. But anyway, this is one that like. It's almost redundant, but I feel like we have to ask at this point. Do you think that we're ever going to get like a roadkill skunk that comes out to the community or do you think we're going to recreate it or do you think it's just maybe not entirely what we remember? No, I think I think that a lot of times people will have some, some really skunky weed and like I hate the word or the term roadkill skunk, you know, um, just from all the shit that goes on with it from that especially like that one guy but anyway so um i think a lot of people don't really hit the genetic potential on a lot of their growing um certain plants are more forgiving in the terpenoid range like you know durbins and cookies and jack hairs and a lot of things it just doesn't matter at all the smell always comes out and there's a lot of things but you really got to nail it man and you're not going to see a whole lot of that outside of organic that are done like really really primo so i think a lot of times people get the stuff and they they don't hit the uh they don't hit the marks and they they add it they just didn't, they didn't quite get it um i do believe that yeah somebody somebody could definitely put it out there you know and work it take you know years of work and put it into a seed form and you know have everybody rant and rave and try to rip it off and you know, act like fucking assholes about it. Um, but, you know, that that's going to take a special type of person who wants to do all that. <laughs> and uh, that ain't, ain't going to be me. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, it's it's there. It's there to be work. It's just, you know, somebody somebody's going to have to put in the work to do it and decide what they're going to do at the, at the end of the journey, if they're going to put it out there or, just hang on to it and be happy. It's kind of, kind of preserved, you know, but there's just so many things that could be, you know, skunky weed, you know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, it's not a pure skunk variety or anything like that. There's a lot of, you know, Afghan hybrids, ash plant hybrids and all types of stuff. 
that can give them the desired effect at the end of the day. But then ultimately it's going to be up to the grower to, you know, do their thing and, and grow it. Cause back when you had a lot of skunky weed, you know, people grew up a little bit differently too. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of input that people don't, don't use nowadays that were being, being used back then. And people miss out on a lot of that stuff too. Uh, it's just, just my two cents on it. Yeah, that's an interesting take. I definitely think that the style in which we grow now versus then has something to do with it for sure. But that brings us on to the final quickfire questions. And I'm going to have to word this one. I'm going to have to think a little bit about how I word it. But basically, I'm wondering if there were theoretically people in jail who did smoke weed, was there a particular experience that people thought was quite memorable? Um, yeah, so I got a, I got a story about a friend, an alleged friend. He might have allegedly done that, right? And instantly, he's like, oh, man. Because, like, by the way, they pissed at you there. So just, you know, like, it could, it could get hit randomly. If you, you piss dirty, like, it, it's a very bad thing. So <laughs> all the time, he's like, hey, man. Hey, right. you think I'm good? You, th- you think I'm all right? You, you think I'm fine? I'm like, oh, no, dude, you're fucked, man. Uh, you know, like, they're, they're going to know. It's like, oh, man, man. I mean, this is like within an hour. His eyes are already off. Oh, man. Like, oh, should I just drink a bunch of water? What should I do? They're just total fucking paranoia. And this goes on for, for weeks. Like, I mean, you, you think I'm okay by now. Like, I'm, you know, and I'm like, yeah, mine's fat. Well, I'm not really fat. I was like, ah, I don't know, man. You put on a I don't know, a couple of pounds. I don't know, man. It's pretty iffy. Oh, man. Oh, you think they're going to call me? Uh, <laughs> dude. And I enjoyed fucking with him every fucking day because I passed on the on the opportunity, allegedly, if that ever happened. And um, and for, for that reason, because I know that that would be just probably the worst thing to fucking do. Like, it'd be great, but on the same token, man, it'd just be or will you would instantly regret it on the exhale. It would not be enjoyable at all, you know. For sure, man. That's that's an interesting one. I, I hope uh, your friend was was all good. Oh yeah, yeah. Allegedly, he was he was fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all he was all good. So the next question is: What's the one cutting you miss the most? Um. Like currently in this in this moment, like if I had one, just rock it out real quick. Well, like just overall, something you had at some point in the past that just isn't around anymore, and you're like, man, I miss that. That cuttlefish was a pretty big, pretty big hit, and we were already talking about it earlier. So, you know, yeah, that's that's definitely definitely that one. And I had a uh, I had a female. Um, out of a sour IBL um, from back in the day that was like way better than the original original uh, sour and uh, I missed that one a lot that was fucking that shit was awesome yeah good one to pick good one to pick so the next question is is there a question that you wish you could ask one of the other breeders out there alive or dead ooh I would probably, if I had to, if I had to pick one, I'll pick somebody who's no longer with us because if they're alive still, I still got that chance, you know. Um, and there's a lot of dudes, you know, alive I'd still like to kick it with and just, you know, talk to. Like I know Shawnee Bottle was always one of, always kind of wanted to. I just pick his pick his brain a little bit. He's a good one. No, there's a few, but probably have to go for a medal to sit down with him. I'd have a lot of a lot of questions too, because he got to see so many things grown on such a large scale back then. Um, it'd be you know asking about all types of little little traits you know that that he was picking up on in these large populations that led him to to do what he did because they were they were truly starting from very very swaggy beginnings man 
and to see the work that he ended up with at the at the end that was being released fucking amazing those guys were really fucking doing it man and you know yeah so that that, that would be one my one probably brilliant answer brilliant answer i'd probably have to likewise do the same second last question what's the most disappointing weed experience you ever had so maybe it's like something that was really hyped and just fell short um. <laughs> oh man that's a dangerous question um, there have been so many um yeah man i don't think i could pick just just one i'm thinking like things that i've I've grown personally but um i'd probably say like you've been with me you've been with me at the shows before yeah so can you remember people like this bring you bring you random buds and everything else yeah um there was a lot of fucked up blood that would come our way. And that's why I'd take them aside and tell them, like, yeah, don't feed kelp and alfalfa through the whole cycle. You're fucking yourself up here. And then later they'd come back and be like, wow, it made all the difference in the world. And like, yeah, for sure. Um, and sometimes see stuff with powdery mildew on it and everything. Um, I guess. Man. I don't even want to say it because you know, I'm just a hater, you know, because it, it wasn't even the, the real. So, like, back in the day, like, I got turned on to, like, to smoke some cookies that was, like, the real, the real legit cut. I, I like that. Like, that was, that was pretty good. But it was, like, some of the, the offshoots or the knockoffs was, like, wow, this is just, you just get kind of, like, a little buzz for a few minutes and it's gone, you know. Tastes good, but it's just nothing. No sustenance to it, man. It's just not not doing anything. And like when you hear the person that that's got it talk, just raving about it, you know, and you're just like, ah, I don't know, man. That that real one was, you know, kind of kind of kind of what's up, you know. But uh, I don't know. I was let down by a lot of the by the hybrids and shit like that. Yeah, look, certainly not a sentiment new to us. We've heard that before for sure. Yeah, there's like a few of them that stood out like really good. Like Exotic Mike had that cookies and cream that was like really good. You know, um, there were like a few that stood out. I was like, wow, that's, that's actually good. Um, but yeah, a lot of them, man, they're just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think everyone's grown out of cookie hybrid before and usually you find some weird mutant in there that just totally fails and you're like, okay, okay, we're done here. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our final question for this one, if you had to pick one genetic or strain that's just going to be erased from existence and all the prodigy from it are gone, <laughs> which one you are going to do? Oh, my God. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this, and everybody's like, "Oh yeah, he's gonna say cookies." No, I'm gonna take out beasters. All right, I'm gonna take out the fucking beasters, the top forty-four or whatever you want to call it, the Viking, that fucking clone, and the beasters. Yeah, that, that needs to be stricken, stricken from uh from existence for sure. But I got that. Uh, that was a that was a bad one heavy non-resonating shitty buds that got slung for way too much money across college campuses and heady boys you know like yes. <laughs> yeah fuck the beasters dude yeah that one needs to be gone drinking from the record i love it man a humanitarian at heart doing something for the people it's beautiful yeah it needs to be put with Lex Luthor in that fucking plate glass thing. Or no, the dudes from Superman or whatever. They put him in the glass. They send him in outer space. <laughs> That's when he, the Beasters needs to go with him. <laughs> well, I I think that just about brings us to the end of it for this one. Were there any comments or shout-outs you wanted to make? Man, um, just to everybody that you know has supported before, during, and after everything. 
Um, thank y'all so much. And uh, got a lot of cool shit coming uh, in the future. And thanks for uh, coming along on the journey. Um, any of the, the fuckers out there, you know what I mean? Uh, eat shit and fucking die. <laughs> Straight up. Um, luckily, that ain't made very many people, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I don't, don't want to be a negative guy. So um, just thanks to everybody. And uh, a lot of cool stuff coming in the future. And uh, definitely going to pay it back and pay it forward. And uh, do a good job for everybody. And a lot of cool shit coming down the pipe um, onwards and upwards. And, and it's just, you know how it is, man. You mentioned one person, right? And you, you start going down the list. If you fucking slip, forget that one person. They're going to they're gonna be fucking pissed. So I'm not going to go down that route. Everybody knows, you know, got a lot of love for me. And uh, I know I got a lot of love for them back. So y'all know who you are. And uh, yeah, thanks for everything. So again, you know, a huge thank you for coming back on the show, the the Skunk Commander and the man behind Dominion Seed Co., Duke Diamond. Thank you again. And thank you for having me on, buddy. You know, I like I like your, as you would say, I'm very very keen, very keen on you and your uh, your podcast. So there we have it, friends. What do you think? Good to hear from our buddy Duke. I've got a soft spot for him as well. As always, huge shout out to our sponsors. Seeds here now, number one seed bank in the game. Copper Biological Systems, you know me, love them. Check them out for all the predators to keep your garden happy and healthy. Promix Connect, the best mycorrhizae in the game. Shout out to our buddies at Charlie's Cannabis. Best counter in the game. If you're in Oklahoma, hit them up, guys. You will not find better quality. Trust me. And last but not least, a huge shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys are the lifeblood of the show. We could make episodes happen without you. If you'd like to help support the show and ensure future episodes happen, please go check out the Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash the podcast. Exclusive unheard content, additional episodes, so much more. Check it out. I think that just about does it, guys. I'll catch you for the next one. See you.